What is going on, everyone? Welcome back. Thank you for uh, your patience, everybody. I had a little trouble getting the stream going, but you know, we are live right now. We're doing it, doing it big time. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me. My name's Clinton Jones. I'm also known as the Punisher. And uh, yeah, today we're going to be diving into the creation of my alternate realities submission. Obviously, I can't win my own challenge, but you guys know there's a challenge going on right now. Um, if you don't know about it, definitely there's a there's a video that I'll point to in the screen that I'll have to link to later. Um, but check it out. It's an incredible challenge. We got prizes from PNY, Rococo, um, Wacom. Aftershocks and Quixel, and it's going out to the uh, first, uh, for first, second, third, fourth, and fifth place for all the renders. But I'm gonna be doing my render today <clears throat> on the stream, at least starting it, you know. So let me let me uh, show you guys. Let me give you guys a brief little overview of what we're gonna be doing today on the stream, if that sounds good to y'all. So let's uh, let's let's hop in here for a second. So I want to show you guys how I created this piece of concept art um, that's going to be guiding my eye throughout the creation process of this art. And this is about, I don't know, 75 to 80% of what I'm seeing in my head. I certainly want to add some robots and some plants. You know, there's going to be some of that going on here too. I'm not super happy with, happy with the left side of the world over here too. It's a little flat, but I just want to talk to you guys and show you how I created this in Photoshop and why it's so important and super necessary from there. You know, we'll hop into the pure F board that I created. And I just want to show you guys how I'm using this to, you know, use as reference throughout my creation process. I can zoom in here and I want to show you guys some art books that I've been using and pulling images from um, that have inspired me, that inspired my render and how I got the idea for my render. So I want to talk to you guys about that as well. Um, I have some frames down here from some of my favorite movies. This is Behind Enemy Lines. Well, Owen Wilson, yes, this is Owen Wilson, and uh, Children of Men, there's an incredible scene in Children of Men at the end, towards the end of the movie, that's just absolutely insane, and I'm using this as uh, like some foreground and background elements here, you can obviously see this like gate, this fallen gate is right in the foreground, and it's just helping me get a look that's going to guide my eye throughout the process. So, um, Dave over there, I see you, thank you for that super chat. Um, he says, have some kombucha. Thank you. I got some in the fridge. I'll bust it out in a second. Um, also, your concept art is similar to my idea. Dude, no worries. If, uh, if my concept art is similar to your guys' idea, don't worry. Roll with your idea. There can be two or three or four or five or ten post-apocalyptic renders um, on this challenge. Don't copy what I'm doing, obviously, but roll with what you had in mind, okay? We have until June 1st to deliver these, uh, these renders, and I'm going to put them together for the most epic uh, basically the most epic montage the internet has ever seen. So, um, before we hop into it, y'all, uh, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor. Um, they make these streams and these videos and basically my full-time job on this channel possible. So I'll be back in two minutes, y'all hang tight and I'll see you soon. Stream is brought to you by our friends over at Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives like you guys who are looking to up their game, grow their value, and learn a new skill. Now, it doesn't matter if you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced on your journey. You can learn anything here on Skillshare at any level. So I want to do something a little different this time around and tell you guys three fun facts about myself through different courses on Skillshare. The first one is a drawing course by Brent Eviston. And it walks you through all the basic steps of drawing, all the important fundamental foundational building blocks that you'll need if you want to get started. When I was in middle school, I always took art as an elective and I still draw today. I love drawing in pencil and pen. And it's a great way for me to get out of my head and just get creative on paper as opposed to behind a computer monitor. The second course is a yoga course. And the reason I'm doing a yoga course is because I'm actually a certified yoga instructor. Now I don't teach classes regularly, but I love yoga so much that I wanted to learn as much as possible and took a yoga teacher training class and truly believe that yoga is the key to your youth. And I think it's super important that us 3D artists get into yoga because we're sitting down all the time. You know, I'm live streaming all the time. We gotta get up, we gotta get healthy we gotta stretch our bodies. So this course by Deep Kumar is a really nice class and it goes through all the basic poses that you guys will need to start building your yoga foundation. 
And finally, I love drumming so much. I started in drumline in eighth grade and just love making some beats. So if you guys want to learn to make some beats, then check out this course by Thomas George. It's an Ableton Live 10 course. So this is a 10 hour and 24 minute course, definitely a deep dive into making music in Ableton Live 10. But if you guys want something smaller, I guarantee you, you can search it up here on Skillshare and you'll find exactly what you're looking for. So as a Skillshare member, you guys get unlimited access to regularly updated premium content for less than $9.99 a month for a yearly subscription. And to the first thousand people who click the link in the description, I got you guys with a free trial of a Skillshare premium membership. You guys are going to learn something new. You're going to grow. You're going to get past the competition. And it also helps me out too. It helps me do more of these live streams. So click the link in the description and start learning. All right. Thanks, y'all. I appreciate you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your time. Um, yeah, Skillshare is great. Right. If you want to learn more stuff, then yeah, click the link below. Get that, uh, get those, get that free, that free trial. Um, so guys, let's jump in. All right. I want to show you all. Well, let's just jump into it. There's, there's so much to do. Um, okay. Let's see. Here we go. Here we go. Bam. All right. So if you guys are just joining us, we're going to talk, I'm going to talk to you about how I started, uh, the creation of this little concept art piece. It's nothing fancy. I am no concept artist and I am no Photoshop master. That is, that is. Uh, just a fact. All right, but this is gonna help me, you know throughout my creation process So let's hop into Photoshop Real quick and I want to show you guys how I created this um, So let's see here. Let's turn off all these layers and let's start with the reference. So If you guys are joining me on this challenge the alternate realities challenge you have downloaded the folder um, With all the project files and you'll get something looking like this you got a person and you got a sphere and your job is to fill out this environment. You know, this is my version of it, keeping the person and the sphere in frame. And there's probably be a little bit of stuff, you know, obscuring the front of this. And like, maybe there's a little bit of stuff obscuring the sphere up here just a bit, but notice how the character and the sphere, its visual weight is maintained. All right. You know, on, off, on, off. You guys get the point, right? So let's build this thing up. How am I doing this? So we'll start with the foreground. Um, and I'm just taking all those different little pieces here from uh, from that pure F board that I have These are all the little pieces. I'm using this stuff as the foreground and I'm using this stuff as uh, the character here from from uh, what is it? Uh, Behind enemy lines one of my favorites one of my all-time favorite movies so I'm just pulling some foreground stuff and one tip here is instead of erasing the you know the actual layer here i'm actually using an adjustment layer so this little this little guy right here um and a vector mask right and you can paint black and white onto this vector mask and remove different parts of the image just by painting black and white so it's like an eraser but you can actually paint things back in if you realize like like oh i want to get this out of the way but oh no i actually want to switch it up so i'll, I'll switch my brush to a, a white brush and i'll paint it back in so you're working non-destructively and I'm just kind of building up these layers to match. You know, I added like a wet street from, uh, I think this is from fury a behind the scenes shot of, uh, from fury, the Brad Pitt tank movie. Um, so that's my foreground, my background. Let's take a look at my background. So this is my buildings, my buildings layer. Let's go ahead and just like turn all these off and work up one by one. So I'm pulling just different images from Google and kind of dropping them in to shape out, this sphere, right? So I'm going to work with the negative space and it's really, you know, it's just, I'm using it. I'm using the reference here as a guide, which is exactly what you guys should be doing. If you're joining me on this challenge, um, Gigi, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate you very much. You're sending love and some, some maple bucks. <laughs> Thanks for all the knowledge. Apple bucks, map, maple, maple bucks, that good maple syrup. Thank you for the maple syrup money. I appreciate you. I actually just ran out uh, a few days ago. All right, so um, to finish it up, yeah, this is just another image here. Um, this is from an island called Battleship Island, uh, also known as Hashima, off the coast of Japan. And it was an old either coal mining town or an oil town or something. And they closed it down, I think, in the 60s. I'm not really sure. 
Um, and I want to show you guys some art books um, right after this. And then right here, so I'm, I'm just doing a little brightness and contrast on that to kind of even things out. Now, to pull the character out from the background, actually, no, I'll save that for last. I'm just dropping in a background here. You know, this is just your classic uh, foggy field render. And it's just a placeholder. You know, I'll probably put something else back there when I actually do the render. But um, it's just a, it's a good little placeholder. And what else? What else? Since I'm lazy, I just turn things black and white because I'd rather not color correct and composite. And I'll just get my tones correct in a black and white version. And you can see the difference here. I kind of crunched it up a little bit. And I added some fog, which is just another layer here. Large white soft brush, low opacity. Kind of getting back here behind Owen Wilson. And uh, popping them out from the background just a little bit. Larry Bryant, thank you for the super chat. I see you. Um, get my master's in VFX and you're inspiring me to keep going when times are tough. Thanks for what you do. Absolutely, man. Good luck on that. Learn as much as you can. Put it to good use. Make some cool stuff. And uh, thanks for hanging out with me on the stream here, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for the support. So yeah, the reason I'm doing it black and white is just the color, you know, the color is going to happen in the program when I do it in the VFX. And when I do it in the freaking CG world, it's going to happen, all right? The color, is, the color will be there. Black and white is just easier for me to do it here in Photoshop so I don't have to focus on color. This is just a quick and dirty thing to get my idea out, you know what I mean? Bar, oh boy, Bart Lomage Dozdeck. Um, apologies if I butchered that, man. Uh, thank you for the super chat. He says, hey, Clint, love your content and taking part in the challenges. Um, it's off topic, but what are those glasses? Been looking for frames like these forever. Oh, you're talking about these cult leader glasses? The ones that, freaking everyone calls them cult leader glasses, dude. Uh, it's from that freaking Far Cry game. Um, so, yeah, no, these are, I just get my stuff from Zenny. Zenny Optical. Um, it's a really cheap and easy way to get some glasses. Yeah, you just get your prescription, go over there, get your glasses. Um... But thanks for the super chat. I appreciate you. Now, I want to talk to you guys about ideas here. Um, how did I get the idea for this render? And I also be curious to know how you guys got the idea for your renders. I'll show you my process. So here's what I do. I have a bunch of art books right here, as you can see. Um, this is just a fraction of the art books I have. Um, I got a whole bunch back here, as you guys can probably see the bookshelf. And I love art books because they really help me get creative and it's a physical thing that I can flip through the pages and, and really get inspired. So this one here, I took the cover off because it's kind of an expensive art book. It's, these things can get a little pricey and I, don't, I didn't want to damage it. So it's called um, City of Darkness Revisited. And this is an incredible art book, man. Check, check this out. It's got like all of... Uh, well, there's a place called the Walled Kowloon City in Hong Kong. And it was on the Kowloon side, hence the name. And it was torn down in 1995 and was actually the densest place, the densest human population in the whole world. Um, if, what is, what's the fact? If, uh, if Hong Kong in 2001 had 25 people, then the Walled City in 1993 had 605 people. It's ridiculous. But this book, as you can see, you know, like the, by the images here, you guys can see that it definitely inspired the render. So I flipped through this thing and I was like, you know, what are some cool, some cool things that I can get into? Obviously, you know, Batman, they did some Batman stuff with it. This book is great. It goes through the history of the whole place. And, um, and it's just, it's incredible because it's just a pile of apartments and people and there was like dentist shops, butchers, and it was a very crime-ridden place. But this book goes through and interviews all the people there. It's a really cool one. Um, it's called City of Darkness Revisited. Now, another one that I like, there's a photographer. Well, this actually isn't the same photographer. Anyway, this one's called Amazing Construction Zone. And uh, there's one render in particular, or one image in particular that I loved. This one right here. So let me see if I can get you a little closer view on that. This is um, basically an underground tunnel um, construction site, and it looks freaking sweet. Yeah, this whole book is full of this stuff. 
Um, lots of really inspiring renders, or not renders, photography that I use for my renders to get inspired. Um, this stuff is amazing. Hoichi Nishiyama, if you guys want to check that out on Amazon. Amazing construction zone. Um, another art book that really inspired this render that I'm going to be doing is the Tekon Kincrete uh, graphic, like the art of Tekken Kincrete, which is an anime that's very detailed. Um, and these are all just incredible pencil drawings. I forget the artist's name, but my God, are these incredible. I just want to show you a couple more. Um, there's one of like a construction site. Like, man, just this. Yeah, look at the look at this. It's so freaking cool. Um, lots of detail in these pencil drawings here. So these really blew my mind and like helped me come up with this render. Um, yeah, more just construction site stuff. You guys can't tell already. I'm pretty obsessed with construction sites. There's just a lot of texture and detail that goes into all this stuff. Um, two more and then we'll get into it. This one is a photo book of Hashima Battlefield or Battleship Island. And it, you know, has a bunch of shots of of the place and you know the history of the place and you know like the schools and everything some really cool art some really cool photography of this place and i think you could probably get this on amazon too um it's called what is this it's all in japanese oh um yeah, just, I don't know, look up Battleship Island or Hashima art book. Maybe it'll be on Amazon. And finally, my favorite game ever, well, one of them, Hyper Light Drifter. Now, this is going to help me out with, like, a lot of the robots and stuff um, and a lot of the characters when I get into the character work on this because I'm thinking the main character is going to be some sort of, like, half cyborg thing. And, um, you know, it's going to be carrying, like, a box of seeds or something I and mean, every step it takes it'll grow something i don't know we'll figure it out but that's that's what i do to get inspired is i go through my art books or you guys can go through pinterest or you can get some art books and i'll, I'll keep the ones that 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 really speak to me that are close to me i don't buy every art book out there they can get a little expensive but yeah that's kind of how i get inspired i also listen to music that like that feels like the render, that feels like the tone that I want to be in. So that kind of got me this, you know, this idea right up in here. All right. So how the heck am I going to start this thing? I guess I'll open the project file. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, where would it even be? I hadn't even, I had guys, I hadn't even started this thing yet. Uh, challenge announcement video, deliverables, 3D templates, C4D. Here we go. This is it. So fun fact, you guys. Um, if you want to get rid of these bars in C4D, you can hit Alt-V and you go to your safe frames and just turn them off. And you'll, you'll be set up to go. But this will at least help you guys like see... You're not gonna have to worry about that stuff, you know. No, no need to render the stuff and place the stuff you're not gonna use. Um, Sam Lemon, thank you for the super chat. It says, "Hey, Clint, hope you're well. Is it okay if the sphere is just a background piece, and most of the focus is on the character? Um, as long as the sphere maintains most of its visual weight, then you are good to go. If you look at the first challenge we did, the parallel dimensions challenge, each render had a mountain in it, and some people, you know." The goal was to keep the mountain, keep the mountain visible. So keep your sphere visible, please. Um, you obviously, you know, make it look cool. Make it look however you want. Um, but just make sure it's still there, okay? Like, that's that's really the whole point. That's the whole point. The character and the sphere are the unifying elements that allow us to match cut between every single render. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. But, yeah. Now I have to figure out what the heck... Where do I even start, man? Where do I even start? So, let's see here. I'm gonna save the character for last. I'm not even gonna worry about the character until last. I think the first thing I'll do is probably get some sort of temp 
block out um, of the buildings and the lighting. I want to get some temp lighting going and I also would like to maybe work on my foreground and get started on my foreground just a little bit and start working that up. So that's probably what we're going to do today on the stream. If I can get to that point with some temp lighting, a block out of my buildings, and um, a ground plane with some nice textures on it, I'll feel comfortable and I'll feel nice. Guys, we have till June 1st to submit these renders. So if you're wrapping up your render, spend some more time on it. Definitely. You have a month and a half. I'm not going to rush this process. I'm not going to throw in stuff um, and say, oh, it's final just because it's in there. You know what I mean? I'm gonna take this slow, and I'm really going to enjoy this. I'm no, I'm in no rush to create something ASAP. I want to make sure that this is as good as it can be. So I'm gonna spend the time to make it detailed and make it awesome. And I hope that you guys do the same. Um, we got a couple more super chats. Jesse, what's up? You say you love watching the vids. They're relaxing, and I keep them on my second monitor while doing Blender projects. Dude, that's what's up. That's what is up, man. Yeah, keep it going. Um, keep the keep the live streams going. I know they're long. They're very long sometimes, but keep them in the background. And you know, I'm working off to the side, and you're working on your project. That's exactly what we're doing, man. That's the whole point of this. That is the whole point. And Johan, thank you. Says keep going, but the corridor channel hasn't been the same since you left, man. Oh, I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was there yesterday. We we got we all got lunch together and hung out and played some Smash Bros. and uh, they showed me some cool stuff they were working on, man. But yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, I'll pop in from time to time. Definitely pop in from time to time. Winbush! Winbush! What up, what up, dude? Good to see ya. You know, I thought about doing this one in Unreal Engine, but I was like, ooh, that'll be, I'll be going off into no man's land, you know? Ooh, that'll be a tough one. But Winbush, dude, I'm glad you're here, man. It's always good to see you in the chat, man. I appreciate you a lot. Um, let's freaking let's hop into it. We're all just hanging out today, guys. This is a good time. I hope y'all are working on your renders, having a good time. So, like I said, I'm saving the character for last. Um, one thing that I want to keep in mind too is like, whoo, uh, my memory, my RAM, my visual performance. You know, like my computer's life life source. <laughs> I don't want it crunching up on me. I do have an NVIDIA RTX uh, Quadro six thousand up in here which has 24 gigabytes of VRAM. It's a lot of VRAM, but I don't want to just throw everything at it, okay? We have, to be, we have to be selective about all the crap we throw in our scene. So I'm going to do the character last. That's what I did on the last one. And hopefully we can, you know, we can uh, make something nice with that. Let's start with a block out, all right? Enough chat, enough chit chat. Let's do it. So, bam, cube. Let's hop out of the camera. Cool, cool. And let's start building out our scene, yeah? So, let's see. I'm going to create what I have in my concept art first. And then I'll start mixing things up. I want to ensure that the 3D scene generally works and feels right and then we'll start solo in and going from there so let me get my safe frames back it's alt v get your safe frames back let's pull up our our reference we don't need to render anything right now so i'm just going to pop my reference right up in here and let's see let's see let's get this guy bam i wish there was like a hotkey in pure f to like snap to the the picture you have selected anyway um Sai Sharon good to see you again thank you for the super chat you're excited to see the result dude me too this is my most ambitious render yet so we'll see how this goes <laughs> I'm excited for it. I'm very excited for it. I can't wait to do sound design and music and everything you know it's gonna be good um and superior products or superior productions uh thank you for the super chat you're saying can the sphere be animated in place or should it be stationary dude I will say it again I don't care what y'all do, as long as it maintains its visual weight, as long as it maintains its its size and its influence on the render, then you can do whatever you want. You can animate it as long as it stays in place. I don't care. Yeah, but all this stuff is in the FAQs. Um, definitely be sure to read that, guys. 
because there's a lot of questions coming in. Definitely a lot of questions coming in. Let's get these safe frames. Uh, let's get the opacity down to like 50% so we can still see through here. All right, Mr. Owen Wilson. All right, let's get you right up in here. Okay, okay. We can make this sphere editable. Crunch it down a little bit. Bam, I'll just have it extend just past the safe frame so we can see what's going on. Something like that, okay. Um, KL, that's your loop cut tool, you know? Go in edge mode, get that going. Bam, make the slice. Hop in here, select that face, D for extrude, and just move it out there. Now this will, now nah, I'm getting into it. Like this is what I'm thinking about so many things. I'm thinking about how far I need to extrude this because it'll affect our lighting. But that's like, that's some way forward thinking right now. And it's not necessary. So I'm just gonna extrude it past the frame. We can always add and shape the light later, okay? Next, we got some, we got a series of buildings kind of going off into the background here. So here's what I'm gonna do for this. NB will pull up your uh, wireframe view. Let's go ahead and grab a cube. And let's make a series of buildings with a cloner. So I'm just going to hit uh, C. We'll make it editable. Um, we'll scale this up. I think I changed control one, two, three. Did I go one, two, three? How did I? You guys are probably saying, what am I? Why am I saying one, two, three? Shift one, two, three. Uh, I thought I set these hotkeys. Uh, never, never mind. I'll figure that out later. T for scale. Let's scale it up. These are going to be some tall, skinny buildings, something like that. Very cool, very cool. Let's take this and let's move the anchor point down. So I'm going to grab my uh, the axis center tool. We'll drop the Y all the way to the bottom and execute. So that way when we scale it up, it scales up from the bottom, just like that. And I'm going to throw this into a cloner. So let's uh, hold Alt, drop it on the cloner there. Um, it's doing a grid array by default, and eh, I think we can go linear. And by default, again, the Y is set to 50. So they're getting sent up. We don't want that. We want them sent back. So let's do X, positive X. Something like that. Yeah. Cool. And we can do like, I don't know, six of them or something. Now let's throw a randomizer in here. This is where it gets nice, right? So let's do... Da, da, da. If you have the cloner selected by default, it'll go right into the effectors. It's pretty sweet. So select your cloner and let's hold down that cloner button there and let's go to the random effector. And you can see it's already in there if you had it selected. And the random effector is gonna randomly kind of distribute our stuff. So we wanna move this a little bit, you know, move this a little bit. It's a large scene. Oh, all right, let's save our stuff. Here's the thing, here's the thing guys. Don't save over the original project file. Make a new project file so that you have that backup just in case. Um, let's see. So be C4D. And we'll call this alternate realities underscore, I don't know, 0001, I guess. And when I'm finished with this render, you guys probably saw um, the the art breakdown I did of the car on the ocean, right? And I wanna do another one of those breakdowns for this as well. You guys really liked it. There was some storytelling. It was chill, it was moody. Um, the work was good and you guys liked it. It was short. No one has time for these. No one has time for these streams, man. These streams are long. So I want to do another one of those, basically a breakdown for every piece of art I do. I want to do it in that style, so that'll be fun. Okay, moving on. Let's hop back into our camera and see what this is looking like. So you can see how it's kind of like, I want it to, I want it to ride the edge of this sphere. And we're, we're kind of close. We're certainly kind of close. Let's, let's see if we hit play. Now we really need to push that back if we want there to be zero parallax. There, there's gonna be a little bit of parallax, but we really need to push that back into 3D space if we want this, if we want this to be maintained. So we gotta get smart with it, okay? Definitely gotta get smart with it. Zai 
Al-Barakadi. I hope I didn't butcher that. But thank you, sir, for the super chat. Very, very generous of you. My goodness. Thank you, sir. Um, no text necessary. Just straight up with the super chat, man. Very cool. I really appreciate the support. You guys' support helps me do this um, consistently. It helps out a lot. All right. So, how are we going to do this? You know, we want to taper them. We want to taper these. We can cheat it. You know, we can totally cheat it. Let's try... Um, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? I'm just going to mess around until I get the answer. Um, I want to offset the end point like this guy. You see how I'm doing this? I kind of want to offset that. And I think that is just from... Here we go. Yeah, there we go. So I'm just moving the Z, negative Z, so it kind of like tapers in a little bit. And we can totally like... I don't know how this would work, but we can animate this. So we go to the last frame and we animate it like that, which might look a little funky, but it also might look kind of cool too. Oh, it, wait, it didn't animate. Bam. Get that keyframe in there, go to the end, get this keyframe in there, boom. And then that should be good to go. Yeah, there we go. So you can see how the buildings are kind of moving and revealing and sticking to the edge of this. Like that could be an interesting effect. I never even thought about that, but it's like the world is shifting around the character. Kind of reminds me a little bit of, uh, dang, yeah, you, you know, you guys know, if you know, if you know, you know, I'm not the biggest Marvel movie guy. Um, but Doctor Strange, dude, that, freaking crazy the visuals in that movie are insane this kind of reminds me a little bit that little bit of that like shifting and moving perspective which could be sweet you know like this character has influence over the environment maybe that's something who knows who knows that's real cheating right there yeah you said it right Selam. exactly that's some real cheating right there dude <laughs> you gotta get crafty with it all right cool um let's work the random rotation a little bit just a little bit of something, a little bit of, a little, a little bit of, <laughs> a little bit of that. Um, Henrik, respect, brother. Appreciate you. Thank you for the super chat, sir. Uh, very generous of you as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, really, they do. This does help, guys. It does help. I'm doing this full time now. Um, you know the the brand deals, the the skill shares, and your guys' super chats really help me pay my bills, pay the rent, and all that stuff. So. It's much appreciated. Now let's do a little bit of scale action on this thing. Let's let's check the scale. Let's go up on the Y. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit of that. <laughs> all right. Uniform scale. So uniform scale is gonna get it all together. I don't want that. I don't want that. Uh oh, what happened? I can I cut it. I didn't I meant to undo it. We gotta put it back. Put it back where it belongs. All right, so uncheck uniform scale. We don't want that. Poggy, thank you for the super chat. Cheers from Slovakia. Very cool, very cool. Love traveling. Maybe I'll make it out there one day. Fun fact, Slovakia is really small. I didn't know that. How small? Like as small as like New York? I don't know. I usually know a place's geography um, when I visit it. So Japan... I know where Japan is, okay? I know where Taiwan is. Um, I know some other places too, but Slovakia, I've never been, so I don't know. Render Rides, thank you. Uh, love the super chat. You love the streams. Good times, man. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Okay. So I'm just messing around with that little animation there. We probably need to get a bigger building back there couple bigger buildings so here let's hop out of this and let's see if we can't place some larger buildings back here so I'm gonna duplicate our cloner uh, control drag and we can shift f3 this to bring up our dope sheet and we can delete the keyframes on our cloner one we don't need to be animating anything there so we'll delete those we can make these guys let's um, let's make them hitting T we can scale them up 
And we can also, let's see. We don't need as many, so we can take it down to three. And we'll push, we'll push this back a little bit. The further back in 3D space your objects, the, the, um, the less they will appear to move in your frame, okay? So we're really gonna need to get these things back there. Maybe it can be revealed. So these guys are revealed. Um, let's move them. What's the best way to do this? Yeah, I guess we can just slide them over. We, we need them taller. We need them taller. So I'm gonna hit T, scale this up like this. And maybe push them way back. So you see, see how this is working here. Now we probably will animate this one too. Let's push these guys way back. Um, these two right here. I'm going to hop out of my camera view and I'm really going to crank these guys. I'm going to do that by just taking this, this value here. Holding, if you hold shift, these numbers will move a lot faster. So I'm just kind of cranking it back and it's almost at the sphere. It's basically at the sphere right now. The sphere is really back there. And you'll notice the sphere is parented to the camera. If I were to take the sphere out of the camera, you'll see the sphere move too. Like nothing is, nothing is safe from parallax. You know what I mean? You can see it. If you look right here, you can see the sphere uh, appears to be moving. Obviously it's not moving because it's the camera that's moving. But that's why it's parented uh, into the camera is so the sphere stays in one place. So we can get that perfect loop, you know what I mean? So let's grab that cloner. And those, yeah, maybe that's too far back. So let's, let's rope it in a little bit. There you go, you see it just peeking in. There we go, that's what we want. And I'll take that cloner and let's go ahead and animate this Z here. Let's go forward. And we just wanna like hug them up against, or maybe it's just the positioning. Maybe it's just the position. So we'll take that cloner and coordinates, bam. We'll move it up here and lock it in right there, bam. Cool, so now it's like all moving with the camera. And to save on render space, let's, let's grab both these cloners and set it to a multi-instance. Uh, maybe a render instance. Yeah, it should be the same. Multi-instance, render instance. It'll probably do the same deal. I don't know why I'm chugging already. I shouldn't be chugging already, but I am. Who knows? This is all placeholder stuff, but you guys can see how, like, we're maintaining the sphere's visual weight, right? That makes sense. We're maintaining that uh, that background there this shape. So let's keep going. Let's keep going with it. Um, let's save our stuff. This is our block out version. Now I kind of want to work it up on the side too. So here's what I'll do. I will copy this one here, control drag it over and let's kind of, yeah, you see right there, you see how that's, bam. So that looks good. That shape right there generally looks nice. Okay. So Let's go back to frame one. We can move it right there. We'll lock that keyframe. And then I also want to adjust the, the Z here. Bam, so something like that, bam. And let's see what that looks like. We'll scrub it. All right, so it's kind of clipping. I think um, I can probably, like this one feels good, but the end frame feels, it feels a little a little far out. So let's find what axis that is. Yeah, let's set a keyframe here, move it back, and set another keyframe. And y'all, you know, we're cheating. You see, like there's a little bit of parallax right there. Feels kind of cool. And it's subtle, you know, when you play it, it's gonna be a subtle situation. I don't know why. Why is it chugging like it is? 
Shouldn't be. Okay, we can select uh, we can select all frames or no un deselect all frames. I learned this one from uh, uh, shoot, what's his name? God dang, I forget. I'll remember eventually. Yeah, uncheck all frames, and then you'll get your full frame rate. Basically, you'll get the real time speed of how everything works. Um, Z Zaid Al Barakati, thank you again for the very generous super chat. He says, "Thank you so much. Your channel motivated my VFX journey. How would you go about learning C4D from barely um, on basics to decent, specifically for VFX and working with live action footage?" Okay, so I have a couple. Um, tutorials it's called a full vfx workflow and the thumbnail is a uh like a like a little newspaper stand watch that video it's about an hour long and it just takes you through click by click the whole process bringing footage in tracking it dropping your stuff in i also have another video it's a how to turn yourself into a robot the thumbnail is me in a rococo mocap suit with a robot watch that one too um it has you know the full breakdown click by click step by step on how to do that too and it's the same deal it's like how to use mocap suit and how to shoot your footage track your footage all that good stuff so check those two out those are really good ones other than that man like i don't know grayscale gorilla is amazing i i use them all the time even video copilot even though it's after effects they have some c4d stuff too um yeah and just and just youtube your stuff around skillshare hey go to skillshare click the link in the description get the the free the free trial uh Check it out. They got a lot of stuff too. So there's lots of options. Lots of options. All right. So you guys can see we're kind of maintaining the visual weight of this sphere right now. I can pull the sphere away. Let's turn it off. And you can see a general shape here. We're going to get this little bottom middle part, which will really help us. Um, but let's, let's do that now. Okay. So how am I going to do this? Let's get out of here. Let's zoom up in here, okay? And this is actually pretty cool if you you can see this all move around. That's fun. All right, so what we can do here is let's grab that cube, bring it out, pop it out here. Hmm. What's the best way to do this? I'm honestly, we can probably let's throw it in a cloner. Let's take that cloner and set it to a multi instance to save on memory. Let's also do ooh radial. Maybe this will work. Um, Interesting, interesting. I'm wondering if this will work. If this doesn't work, heck, let's try it. If it doesn't work, I have an idea for another way. But let's take this down to like that. Yep. And let's push, maybe push this back. Um, like it needs to be, instead of a circle, it needs to be like, a, like an oval. Um, my face guy, my face guy, thank you, my guy. Uh, for the super chat, it says, love your stuff. How are you enjoying resuming content on your channel? I know you and the guys at Corridor are really close. So I wanted to ask about the transition and how it's going so far. It's going great, man. Honestly, it couldn't be better. I am loving everything I'm doing on my channel. It is such a breath of fresh air for me to be able to do this. You know, I had my channel going for a while. I started it in 2006. Got a lot of short films, a lot of action comedy action drama, short films on my channel, sci-fi action, that kind of stuff. And, you know, that work stopped. It stopped. And I didn't post a video in like six years. This was when I was at Rocket Jump, at Corridor. And it's the best because now I get to return to it. I didn't, I don't really have anxiety about it anymore. I used to, I used to think like, oh, people are, I'm going to post a video. And like, oh, what's this? I didn't subscribe for this. So I'm kind of in a sense restarting my channel, but I'm loving it. It's the best. Doing these streams with you guys has been so cool and helping you guys out with all of your stuff, at least a little bit, has been amazing for me as well. So it's it's been amazing. That's 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 all I can say. And I still get to hang out with the corridor guys. Like I said, we got lunch 
um, yesterday, played a lot of Smash Bros, and it was cool. And Adam, thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Um, he says, hey, Clint, I love your work and started film college because of you. Holy crap. Um, and the Corridor crew, and hope someday be a group of filmmakers like uh, like yourselves. Yes, dude, keep it up. Uh, surround yourself with the people that love doing what you love doing, and you'll do some pretty amazing stuff because two heads are better than one, I promise you that. That's the hardest thing on my channel right now. It's just me. Um, I have my buddy Cliff. I'll, I'll go to Cliff's place. I'm actually going over there to later today after this. He works in Blender, and we come up with ideas together. So if you guys watched the video of me going away at Corridor, uh, Ren's advice to me of don't do it alone, I, I've, I've really kept that up. I've taken all three of their advice um, very seriously. So I brainstorm with my best friends when I can and come up with some really cool ideas. But let's, let's get back into it. You guys see what I mean? You see how this is kind of working? You're getting this dip. In, in, uh, this dip is caused by things that are closer to camera. So you have the same size the object. Uh, further away from camera, it'll look smaller. And it'll move not as fast. So, you know, we're getting a little bit of something here. We'll obviously have to work with that a little bit. Um, and it's not quite the, cir the circular shape. So let's see what we can do, okay? Um, let's give it a random effector. Uh, let's see with it selected. Let's drop that on there. Random effector, scale, Y scale. So we want the bottom one to really take the heat on it. Um, let's see. We can give these a little bit of random rotation too. Just a little bit. Yeah, we want the bottom one to take the heat absolute scale. How does what does that do? Well, I guess they're all no. Is there a way to change the seed? Yes, there is. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. Let's get rid of, let's get rid of that, and let's just really go to town on this and crank the seed and figure out the seed that like looks the best. And I don't know why the middle one isn't moving. There we go. There we go. You see what I mean? I think this one is nice. So what we can do is take that random effector or the cloner rather, and just take the count up to 10 or something. Mm, now we need that natural dip. Okay, so here's what I'll do instead. I'm gonna hop out of here and I'll do it linearly as opposed to radial. Uh, radially, if that makes any sense. Guys, we got 1,200 people up in the live chat right now. That's crazy. Um, my goodness. We're setting some records here, guys. We are setting some records and I missed it. Michael, Flotron, if Flotron is your last name, that is the sickest last name ever. But it's probably pronounced Flotrin. Um, you said, Sh uh, shut up and take my money. Wait, no, keep talking. I like it. <laughs> Dude, that's what's up, man. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Very generous of you. Um... Heck yeah, dude. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you're learning something. Hope you're getting some value from these streams, man. Streaming is hard. It's like, how do I... Uh, I feel like if I'm not talking, I'm not being entertaining. I gotta entertain. I gotta, I gotta keep talking. I gotta keep the numbers up. But, you know, then I'm like, well, maybe I'm talking too much. I just, I just can't shut up. My throat's starting to hurt. It'd be nice to just not talk. But then, oh no, the numbers are dropping. People are leaving because I'm not talking. They're not learning anything. That's what that's sometimes, you know, sometimes that's, that's where I'm at in my head. Red of paw. Red of paw is doing God's work. Um, no, I just realized that's another person. <laughs> You're still doing God's work though. <laughs> Copper bot. Thank you for the super chat. He says, Hey, will you be taking on contract work or planning to go straight into making your own projects slash earning through streams and packs? Um, yeah, contract work, not so much, man. Not so much. It depends on the project, but I left Corridor to pursue my stuff, not to pursue other people's stuff. So that's my motto. That's what I'm sticking to, man. I'm like, 
doing the best I can, putting the value, putting my time into my own self, investing my time into myself. And it's paying off. It's certainly paying off. The channel has been growing like crazy. You guys are coming back every single week and it's really cool to see. Um, so I really appreciate that. And again, it just depends on the project. It depends on the project. But let's get some work done, guys. Let's get some freaking work done. I'm, I'm going in. Um, all right. Let's go linear with it. And we'll set that to zero. We'll hold shift and push these guys back. Let's set this to, uh, I don't know, six. And we'll kind of, we basically, what we want to do is make a, like a V, a really long V, if that makes sense. Let's hop into the camera and there you go. You see what I mean? It's doing its thing. Let's hop into the random effector. Let's take out the Y scale. And there you can see it's pretty much like perfectly work in the sphere there. I can move these guys around the random just a little bit, open it up a little bit, and we can work the rotation a touch as well. And this is just gonna be general rubble and whatnot. We're gonna replace these buildings with, with assets. We'll dive into the assets. You know, We'll probably build a little asset pack and figure out where I'm gonna get all this crap from. It's not crap. You know, I just I just talk that way. You know what I mean. The random, uh, let's see, or the cloner. Let's control drag it. We'll copy it. We'll move it over and let's adjust and kind of have it come to a V point right there. And then let's go ahead and grab the random effector. Go to the effector and just adjust the scale. Oh, because it's the same one. I see. Okay, okay. Well, maybe then it's seven buildings on this side. I don't know. Um, let's undo that. What's the best way to do this? Yeah, we can do a little bit of this. Just to mix it up a little bit, you know? Whoa. Go back in. And we can see we're kind of getting a little something here. And let's move the cloner. Um, let's go ahead and hit that keyframe let's move it over set that keyframe and bam everything's kind of moving together and the the little focal point the ending point we can adjust this value here so let's hop into camera and see what it looks like we can keep it at the center basically let's see by let's do a little bit of uh So the Z will make this bam right there. And then we'll adjust it back like that. Cool. So it's kind of moving back. And then we'll do the same for this one here. We'll hit that Z and slide it back like that. Hit that keyframe. Does it do anything? I mean, you can kind of just do that basically. Boom. And something like that. Boom. So now we kind of have these buildings moving a little bit to fit that shape. Now, we'll see how that works at, in the end, but that's basically kind of what we have already in our, in our scene here. We can have a little bit of foreground elements too. So let me go ahead and save this. And this is gonna help with fog. You'll actually be able to have these buildings pushed into the background with some fog. And that's really gonna add depth to our render. You want as much depth, well not, you don't want as much depth, but you want some depth in your render. Um, let's take this off. And there you can see, we kind of have that spherical shape maintained as much as possible there. Really cool, yeah. Oh, Alan McKay's up in here? What's up, Alan McKay? Yo! What's going on? 
Hey, good to see you, man. Yeah, we did a we did a little podcast together. Maybe it's coming out soon. Who knows? I'm excited for it. I'm very excited for it. We talked about some good stuff, and I'm excited for you guys to see it. Um, what's up, dude? Thank you for joining. That's really cool of you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm doing the render here, so let me show you my uh my reference. Let me show you my reference. So this is my reference right here. This is a little piece of concept art I put together. Um, maintaining the character and the sphere. Because I gave everybody a template with a character in it. Whoa, and a sphere in it. All right. This is all of my reference imagery of the buildings. Most of it is from Hashima, Battle Battleship Island. Or uh, maybe some of this stuff is from Kowloon Walled City. I'm not really sure. This is from Kung Fu Hustle, one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, and this was my reference to like see how a hole was punched out of some buildings because that's kind of what we're going to be doing with the with this effect here. Um, yeah, more buildings, more buildings. Definitely this is all Hashima. Um, this is from Children of Men. I love this movie so much. It's an incredible movie. If you guys hadn't seen it, definitely watch it. And it kind of goes over. Uh, this is This is like my look and feel, and I'm using it as foreground elements. Same for here. This is uh, Behind Enemy Lines, another one of my favorite movies. Really cool scene. So I'm kind of, yeah, I'm making it work, making it happen. Let's get our reference back. So what do we do from here? Um, good question. Let's see if we can't get some temp lighting going. Um, Clayton Potter, thank you for the super chat. Saying, I wonder how the pipes call in this one. For real though, man, love your streams. You inspire me so much to learn. You teach me how to think like an artist. Dude, that's awesome. That means a lot. Um, yeah, dude, I don't know. I've just, I've been doing this for a while and my way is certainly not the right way. And it's not the wrong way either. It's just a way. And I'm hoping that some of the things that I do ring true to you guys and help y'all create some cool stuff. Um, it's really cool what we've done together over the last year. This is like basically the year anniversary of me restarting the channel and these streams. Maybe, maybe next week we'll do some year anniversary thing. I don't know. Who knows? But let's, uh, let's get some temp lighting up in here. You know what I mean? Let's hit render on this bad boy and see what we can see. Let's save this stuff. Evolver. Thank you so much you're here every single week and you, you do the super chat every week man i really appreciate you um for other reasons too for considering me for all the cool stuff you're doing so thank you sir um stay true to myself yes sir will do that's the way to go absolutely okay so guys we want to make sure we're seeing just what we want to see in the render by that i mean we don't want any of this top bar stuff so let's hit the lock button and then let's scale it down to 0 0.5 0 0.4 yeah, something like that. So we can see what we're seeing, you know what I mean? Now let's get some light up in here. Let's get some temp light. So I'm going to make an HDRI environment. And let's go with a color. The color, I'm going to sample my reference. Um, something like this. A little darker, perhaps. Let's throw a octane tag onto the camera. Camera imager, turn that on. I always well, I'll switch this to linear 2.2. Um, maybe a little vignette on it, just a touch. Saturate to white is 0.2. That means any bright light that is shining in the camera its color will actually be white. The source will be white, just like in real life. But the fall off will be the color you choose. Um, I am a fan of Portra 400. I'm a big fan of Portra 400. It kinda has a greenish tint to things, which I love. Um, so maybe this is like a, a temp situation that'll work for us. Let's go ahead and hit the scene with a light. So let's let's get out of here and let's make a big old area light. 
maybe perhaps a sunlight. That's what we could do. All right, and let's work this sunlight around and try and get it right up in here. Something like that, maybe. I don't want it to be too bright and sunny, but we'll, we'll change the lighting. I'm gonna change the lighting most definitely as we move uh, through our render. Maybe something like that. I'm not quite sure yet how that's gonna work. But maybe we can do something like that. And then we'll take the daylight, let's go to the sunlight tag, and we'll take the sun size to like, I don't know, 20. That's really gonna soften up our shadows. Um, and let's go ahead and mix it with the sky texture. Um, let's do, by taking the sun size to 20, it, it smooths out our shadows. That's exactly what that does. Mix with the sky texture. So maybe we just do like a HDRI environment or something. Uh, crude characters, thank you for the super chat. Due to you and the quarter crew, I'm getting started with digital art and have learned so much. Thank you. Hope to do more with Unreal Engine 4. Can't wait um, to you make a game and God help the computer you use. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I have a really cool idea for an Unreal Engine uh, concept that kind of... Um, well, how do I say this? It's an idea I have that incorporates a lot of the cool stuff we've been doing over the last year into one place. And it is an interactive thing that you guys can hop into. So that's all I'll say. Um, it's going to be sweet. I'll be working on that this year for sure. I hope to get it done by this year. I'll be streaming some stuff too. More on that later. But right now, we're doing some cool art. All right. So let's see. I'm wondering, hmm, it's definitely like an overcast situation. Um, I'm thinking like the roofing and stuff will help shadow the foreground environment. But this isn't, like, this isn't far off. Maybe, in, oh, excuse me, maybe instead of that sun, we will do an area light. <laughs> Pardon me. Oh, boy. Let's bring this up. We'll scale it up. What's going on? Oh, that's rotation. <laughs> and we'll have it face the front. Remember that? Remember that little trick I showed you guys in the uh, the art breakdown I did last week or two weeks ago? The area light trick where you scale up the area light and you blast some good old light onto our scene. Um, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. I'm just giving it a little bit of fill light. Maybe we can go all the way back here, up with it. And it's just a giant global kind of a situation that we can scale up. Just a massive light in the sky. Yep, that's a sun. That's what a sun does. But we can hide this a little bit better, I think, without having to use an HDRI, HDRI environment. Um, the bounce light on this thing is nutty. Bring it up. Yeah, could be interesting. I think it's a little too early to say this is right or wrong. But it's doing something off and on. It just helps helps our scene a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, save this. This is kind of our block out here. It's a very rough block out of our scene. So let's start sourcing like... Hmm, what do we want to do? How do we want to do this? Let me go through the Mega Scans library because the Quick Quixel swooped in, y'all. Um and they're hooking it up. I think Quixel 
you guys get a year-long subscription to Quixel Mega Scans for winning all five. First, second, third, fourth, and fifth place get a year-long Quixel membership. So that's pretty sweet. Graham, welcome. You're not late. You can always watch the video late a little bit later. It's going to be on YouTube forever. You know how it is. Um, but welcome. Welcome to the stream. Good to see you. God dang, I love Mega Scans so much. They have the best stuff. Let's go full screen with it. Bam. Yeah, good times up in here. So I'm looking at my reference. And we're going to need a few things. Maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves with this. Um, but I'm going to need to start building out some things first. I think I'm going to do the foreground first. I will do my foreground first. And then I'll work on the background. Very similar to how I did it for the art breakdown. Right? You guys remember the, the car by the water? Yeah. So we'll, let's see what we can find on Mega Scans. I'm just going to favorite the stuff. So I can pull it into my scene. So I'm going to go to my favorites. You can see here, this is all the stuff from the car one. So I'm going to unfavorite all this and build a new favorites list for this project. Okay. So let's go to the home page and see what we need. Um, let's, let's go to the 3d assets and find like, uh, a, I don't know. 3D assets, um, industrial, street, let's try industrial construction. Sweet, demolished, yes. Yes, please. I mean, I can just favorite all this stuff right now because this is all good stuff that we can use to build out and shape our scene with. Okay, let's go to rubble, yes, please. Concrete pile, yeah. A freaking bulk bag, yeah. All this stuff is such good stuff. I'm just gonna favorite all of this. Cause we really want lots of detail in our render, in our scene. And this is gonna add all of it. It's so good, so good. Um, debris, pallets, yeah, we want, dude, literally everything here. We just want all of this stuff. Um, like, I just want all of this, and it's gonna help us. Oh boy, it will help us. Um, pallet, yeah, what's up in pallet? Okay, got some cool stuff up in pallet. Maybe there's some pallets in the foreground. We can favorite that stuff. Um, barrels, mining, hardware. Electrical nuts and bolts like dude all of this stuff we can use except for this Well, maybe we do want this who knows But I kind of want to build out a world that is Here's my idea for the scene you guys are just joining. I basically want to have a couple massive robots fallen over in this world and I want there to be like a lot of foliage and greenery to spice up this kind of decayed desaturated look and I want this character carrying or dragging some sort of like cargo box full of plants and it's like with every step it's taking it's growing plants or something I don't know um, basically restoring life to a destroyed world is what I want to do um So I'll have to figure out how to do those robots. I've been watching uh, Yasuke. Have you guys seen Yasuke on Netflix? Oh boy, is that good. And that's kind of what got me the idea for the robot stuff. Ooh, the hard hat can be good. Little construction helmet. That's nice. These pipes, the modular pipe pack is going to be good. Maybe some beams like this. A little bit of... PVC pipe and all this will be great for us. These things, these rusted over boxes are going to be awesome. Um, let's see. Mining. Uh, maybe these guys, these hydraulic pumps and beams will be really nice for us. Cart wheels. Yeah, yeah. Railway. It'd be cool to have a little railway through the middle of this scene. Storage. Yes. Barrels. There's a freaking barrel right up in there. Let's get a barrel going. 
Um, this rusted barrel. Oh my god, dude. All this stuff is so good. This is gonna be all up in the render. Yeah, freaking bean cans. Rusty tank. It's like Fallout up in here. We're gonna have the most Mega Scans assets I've ever had in us. <laughs> this is gonna be absurd. Oh, that's gonna be awesome. Yeah. Canisters and tanks. Yes, please. Maybe we put two of these on our character's back. Maybe that's what they're carrying. It's like a bunch of canisters or something. Um, all right, street. Let's hit the streets. Trash can. We could probably use, maybe use a trash can. Curbs. Maybe we could like build out a little street scene. No parking sign. That'd be pretty funny actually in the background. Parking meter. Maybe, yeah, he's crossing a street. Hmm. Yeah, this is all good stuff. Um, yeah, electrical boxes, fire hydrant. Like, it's just going to be so much stuff in our scene. And we're going to have to place it very st strategically. Um, yeah, barriers. We can probably hit some of these concrete barriers. I would love to have... Uh, some like barbed wire fences, but I don't think Megascans has barbed wire fences right now. Let's get these concrete barriers. These are really cool. Megascan city up in here. Sweet, okay. All right. All right, we can pause our render and think about how, let's see, how we want to do this. It's the foreground. I want to get the foreground first, like I said. So I think it's time to start playing with some materials. All right. The materials are going to get out of hand pretty quick, okay? So we're going to need to do a good job of organizing this stuff. I'm going to start with one of my favorite materials, one of my go-tos. I'm going to start with a glossy material. And Cinema is dying. What is happening, Cinema 4D? Hold on. What the heck? What's going on? What the hey? RCA Film Productions, shout outs for the super chat. Says, thank you so much for this, and also, darn you for executing my idea first and better. <laughs> Dang, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How funny is that? How, how is it that, like, w one person has an idea, but another person had that same idea, and they never had any communication? Like, that's a thing, right? That's weird. There's just a lot of ideas out there, I guess. Two And one or two of them is bound to cross paths at a certain point all right so I don't know why why can make a mega scans glossy material that's what I want glossy material mega scans go thank you all right node editor bam let's get this up in here I don't know why this glitches out every time but here we go I like to have my node editor in my main view um, because I don't need it ever when I'm working in this view. So I just make it this view here. Um, let's see. Like I was saying, guys, my favorite material, one of my favorite materials, my go-to materials, is going to have to be RD Textures. RD Textures is one of the, one of the best, I'd say the highest quality texture packs ever. Uh, RD stands for Real Displacement. Let's see, let's see, where are you? Textures. 
RD textures. All right. Ooh, rusty floor. What does rusty floor look like? Ooh, that's nice. Guys, we're gonna have so much detail and texture in our scene, it's gonna be nuts. Sand, dirty, muddy, let's see. Okay, now it's not sand we're going for. Where are you? Um, Tire marks on soil and in mud. I think this one is it. Yeah, this one's pretty good. Probably grab this one. So let's build this out, tire marks. I'm gonna grab the 4K texture for now and update it with the 8K texture as needed because the scene is gonna get out of hand, y'all. It's gonna get crazy. So we wanna maintain as much VRAM as possible. Um, because it's going to get nutty. All right, I'll tell you that much. Depth, 4K, gloss. We want the wet gloss. Actually, no, we're going to do this with Dizzy Viper's Puddle Maps. Um, let's see. High gloss. On the. Let's see. What is it? Gloss dry, gloss dry, gloss wet, gloss wet. High gloss. There's a lot of gloss, huh? There's. Okay, there's six different choices, I see. We want tire marks, high gloss. Mm, sure, let's go with the high gloss, I guess. We can change it out. 4K versions, let's go 4K. We want the dry, dry, dry. We want wet, 4K wet, roughness. God, that's confusing. Dry and wet and normal. Roughness, wet. Okay. Um, let's drag these in. So here's a little quick tip for you guys. All of these textures, all of these uh, these image textures, the ones that are black and white, they come in as color textures in C4D by default. And we do not want that. So we're gonna take them all and set them to float textures to maintain as much VRAM as possible. Let me give you an example. I'll render the scene and I'll show you my, my info. Let's get at the info up in here. Okay, you see this? You This is kind of tiny, but used, free, and total VRAM. We have 1.127 gigabytes used, all right? Now, if I go into my textures and I grab all of the black and white maps and I set them to float, you should see that number go down. But maybe it didn't go down because it's not applied. So let me apply it to a plane on the ground. We'll get that going. Let's hop in. Let's just apply everything first. So we want our diffuse. This is our glossy wet. So gloss is specular but inverted. This is our normal, 4K normal. We have roughness wet. We'll drop that into roughness. We have a bump map, and we have a depth mat or displacement map that will pipe right into here. And let's take this height to 10 is fine, 0.5 and 4K resolution. We'll move this up just a little bit to see our ground plane. Very nice. Obviously, we'll adjust the crap out of this, but that's the idea here. Very, very cool. So you can see um, used, free, and total VRAM is 1.35 right now. If I were to take those black and white maps and change them back to color, so normal, it sees a 1.49. But you change them to float, since they're all black and white, you change them to black and white float textures. 1.49 goes to 1.35. And you need to do this for every single one, right?
from mega scans you can bring them in and they'll come in as float by default because mega scans is hooked up they're awesome select all your crap right click it auto arrange uh, select all your crap right click auto arrange yeah and then you can kind of get a little a little cleaner layout I'm pretty OCD about stuff so I like to have everything kind of aligned in a very particular way but that's just me Very nice. Sweet. So I'm gonna save a new version here, O2. And let's switch this out for another, another texture. I'm kind of building my assets here. I'm building and collecting all of the, the textures that I know I'm gonna use or mess with. So we're going to do this just by control dragging and let's go ahead and uh, hop in here and switch this out for another texture. All right, so there's another one, I believe. Tire marks on mud, tire marks on soil. Let's see what this soil one looks like. Yeah, this is a good one right here. This is a really good one. I used this one for my first parallel dimensions render. Um, it's a good one. So let's go in here and let's start replacing some of these. So the bump, 4K bump, we'll get that. Um, we want color wet, 4K color wet. We want 4K depth. We're just dragging, dropping, and replacing. We want glossy wet. Um, in the specular and then the normal 4k normal of course and we want wet roughness there you go and now we kind of have some wet muddy nastiness let's take let's see this displacement up to like 30 and if we pick it up, you know, you can see it gets really chunky, you know? That's what I want, that chunkiness. That's good stuff. So right now we have one and two. And we can, of course, adjust the color on these to mix them together a little bit more. And you notice what that backlight is doing for us. Without that backlight, you're not getting that gloss. And it, pick, it really picks up. We can take that down to 15, something a little bit more subtle. But this is really going to help us to bring out the detail of our, you know, of our foreground. Let me slide this a little bit closer. All right, so it's going to get really cool. We're kind of close to the ground. The camera's a little close to the ground. Um, we can always go camera, uncheck, check camera, and then we can adjust this on the fly here. And another thing, you see how it's stretching with this? You can just go to the plane and we will take the UV mapping to cubic. And now all the scaling happens uh, separate from how we stretch the plane. So we can, you know, select this little scale thing here, scale it up to really adjust that. Um, let's see, we can take the plane and get him walking on the plane there. And it might be a little too chunky, so we can adjust the displacement map instead of 30. Let's go to 15. And kind of bring it down. But this is just an, this is just an example. We're going to switch out all of these textures and and all that good stuff but we're gonna build our list first all right we're gonna build out our texture our texture pack and everything and obviously you can see already that the ground is a little bit different than uh, my my reference like the angle is higher here versus here so everything's really gonna come together in the render obviously the concept is just there to guide our eye all right
Oh yeah, Ronan. Good shout out. So yeah, Ronan just posted a link. I'll pin it. Um, we got a Instagram, create with Clint Instagram that uh, the mods put together, and it's a place for us to post all of the winners of the weekly challenge, um, and be able to share all your guys's work and stuff. I've been retweeting all of your guys's uh, uh, work in progresses for this challenge on Twitter. And, and uh, you know, on Instagram too, definitely hit me up, create with Clint um, or Punisher. I'll share it. Like, send it to the create with Clint and I'll share it on there. Um, I'll do both. But, yeah, I want to kind of share everyone's work here as we all work hard on this stuff together. But let's keep building out a list of... Oop. Yeah, let's keep building out our list of uh, textures and stuff. Weird. Why is the why is that not moving with the Oh, because the check camera thing probably. There we go. Oh, that's gonna be so cool. Yeah, you see the way it reveals the foreground? Like that's that is awesome. That's why I love the side scroller idea. Because there's so many different little story elements that can be revealed as we go through our world. But let's keep going. Let's keep building out our uh, our texture pack. Keep going with this. So I'm just going to um, delete that. And keep building it from this point. Um, there's some other really good RD texture packs. Let's go. Let's keep looking. Let's keep going. Photo scans, no, info, here we go. So this is like kind of your overview of stuff. And it looks like our scene, um, this sand dirty muddy could be interesting, but there's a lot of debris in the ground. There's a lot of like, a lot of crap, you know, in the ground. So it might be cool to grab, I don't know, sand dirty muddy could be cool. Let's load that one in. That one's That one's got potential. Sand, dirty, muddy. All right, so let's control drag this out. We'll hop in and uh, and make this one happen here. Boom. The reason why, I don't know, I don't know why, but for me, I'm pretty obsessed with like the semi-wet um, overcast lighting because you get so much detail Here's an example. This render, or th this render, this uh, would be a fun render to do. But this shot here, this is uh, Alfonso Cuaron, I believe, Children of Men. And look at all the detail. You see a lot of the detail in the wall because of its, because it's backlit, right? So you're getting a nice highlight on the far side and a shadow on the on the close side and that gives you a really cool detail really cool texture and it brings out the grunginess of your scene and i am a sucker for um urban exploring abandoned places dirty places forgotten places like i love it so much because it just has so much texture to it that's why i love construction sites abandoned buildings um you know there's just yeah there's just infinite texture to that stuff and it's a really cool world to be in. I think my love for this came from like Half-Life and Silent Hill when I was a kid, you know, playing those games. It was just the best. All right. All right, here we go. So, let's replace this one, yeah? Sand, dirty, muddy. So let's grab that bump. We're just connecting everything. This is the boring stuff, you know. We got our color, our depth. Um, muddy. Let's see, muddy gloss or high gloss. Yeah, we're fine with the normal gloss. Um, let's get our normal map and our roughness. So we can probably bring down the roughness here. It's a little intense, but we'll adjust that as needed once we start 
throwing our stuff in. And we can probably throw a bit more displacement on this. 15, maybe even 30 to give us a little bit more texture to our sand here. Awesome. Now, like I said, we're going to have a lot of materials. We're going to have a lot of stuff going on. So we want to... We want to organize all this stuff. So I'm going to right click, select all this stuff. We're going to right click it. We're going to add it to a new layer. We'll double click this new layer and we'll call this RD textures. And you can organize this however you want. You could just have a textures folder. You can have a mega scans folder. I know I'm probably going to want, um, let's go to create, what is it? edit, view, select. What is it? How do I make a new layer? No layer, all, um, create. Materials, default material. Weird. There's probably a way. I'll go to layers, RD textures, right click new layer. Here we go. But it's not showing up. Hmm, it's not showing up. Can I duplicate this? Control drag. Mega scans. No. Okay. Well, maybe we'll just do it as we go. Oh yeah, we have we have our RD textures. I'm gonna grab a couple more. They have some really good like broken concrete ones that I want to mess with. So let's check those out. Um, RD textures. Destructed floor. This is the good stuff. All right. So let's check these out. Um textures and oh also you know what i'm gonna do i've never done this before but i feel like this could help me um is include these textures in my pure ref board for quick uh kind of a quick look you know what i mean so let's grab the ones that we've used so far we have tire marks and soil so we'll go to the demo on that and we'll just drag that in and we'll do the other one in mud let's grab that demo we have that one and we have the uh, sand dirty muddy we'll grab that demo as well this is what we're working with right now a really good reference for us to see um so let's try some of these destructed floors um let's do the demos yes please oh this is such a good one yeah you see all these little rubble pieces in the floor that's what we want like that's super solid but let's keep going through and see what they have um i like that one though so i'm actually going to drag it out into our Come on. Like, that's so good. Destructive floor two. Let's go larger on this. This is very similar. Looks like it's just some, like, little rocky pieces. Oh, I don't want to do that. Cool. What else do we have? Let's check more. Um, very similar. Destructive Floor 3 is very similar. But it looks like it has some like bricks in it and stuff. Really nice. In Pure Ref, double tap an image. Ah. Hey, that's good. I like that. Thank you for that tip. I, I'm always learning from you guys. Hey, CG Geek. What's up, dude? Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the channel. Dude, hey, I don't forget. I don't forget. I remember you left a comment on the Parallel Dimensions video saying, hey, I got to give this a shot next time. Dude, I would be honored if you did something with this uh, alternate realities challenge. That'd be freaking sweet, man. I would love to see what you could do. I challenge you personally. I challenge you if you have time. <laughs> Welcome, dude. 
thanks for joining. I'm just pulling a uh, different different uh, textures here, and we're building out our material material list that's gonna go to build out our ultimate. Bam! This is our this is my reference right now. Is right here. So we're gonna try and make this happen. Looks like you got some fans in the in the live chat, man. That's awesome. Very cool. Okay, okay. Moving on, y'all. Let's keep making some cool stuff. We got some destructive ground to play with here, but I want to keep going through and just get a good vibe and a good sense of all of these different ones. It looks like these first five or so are pretty similar, or at least the first three. Lots of bricks and rubble. This is going to be great. We're going to need a lot of this here. Um, let's let's grab this. Just keep grabbing all this stuff to take a look at it. Oh, okay. Are we mixing it up a little bit? This is almost like it was paved over or something. Mm, Destructive Floor 7 has no demo, but yo, this one's so good. Look at this one. It's like a pockmarked tile. I, I know I want this one. I'm gonna just throw this one in right now because it's freaking awesome. Um, Sweet, CG Geek, yeah, man. You'll join if you have the time. I, I couldn't ask anything else of you. I know you're super busy um, running a YouTube channel and probably, you know, if you have a, a, a wife and kids, you know, like it's a lot of work. So I hear you, man. But it's cool that you're here, man. It's cool that you're joining the, joining the stream. All right, let's build out this texture, guys. Let's do it. This is super fun stuff. All right, um, I'm going to control drag this one. We'll double click. We'll go in, go into the node editor. Let's get this live viewer popping off. Let's render it and see what we can make. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our color. This is only an 8K texture. And let's come on, load for me. Oh, we're going to apply it, of course. I'm going to build this from scratch and show you guys how cool this is. Um, let's see. I'll walk you through step by step each little piece. So let's start with the displacement map, okay? So the displacement map, we need to change out is actually adjusting um, and moving the, the physical geometry of the piece or of this texture. Let's turn off this light. Now nah, the light kind of helps, doesn't it? But you see how it's like getting this, this, this nice little concrete look here? Um, let's go with the normal map next. And the normal map is it's, it's fake detail. And it's just kind of moving pixels up and down left and right based off its color. It's a blue little texture there. So we're getting some extra detail. Now the bump channel is very similar to normal, except the bump is, um, is moving these pixels up and down, moving these points up and down based off of a black and white image. So you're getting some really fine detail in here now. And it's, again, it's fake detail. It's not moving any geometry, whereas the depth here is actually moving geometry. But since we're in Octane, it's not moving the geometry. It's still faking it because it's doing a, a texture displacement. If I was doing a vertex displacement, this is what you'd get. Something a lot more low res, low quality. Um, the rest of this stuff is just the noise in the book. Um, yeah, look, this is, this is our our displacement map when I set it to vertex displacement. That's because we need more polygons for this to work. If I set this to 100 by 100, you can see it starts to work a little bit, hold on. 
100 by 100 should do something. Vertex, let's re-render it. There you go. You see now, it's like, okay, we're getting a little bit more detail. But we have to take this up to 1,000 by 1,000. Ugh. Hold on. Not, no, that's going to destroy my computer. 1,000 by 1,000. And we'll re-render that. And, like, we're barely getting more detail. Come on. But it's taking so much energy to do it. It's like, ah, oh, we have a million polygons, and this is what we're getting. Nah, set that junk to one by one, son. One by one. Change your displacement method, your type, to texture displacement. And it just does it all for free. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. And that's just the displacement. We pipe in the bump map and the normal, and you get even more detail out of this. It's insane. Very cool stuff. But let's keep going. We're not done. We still have the gloss and the color and all that stuff too. So let's do the <laughs> roughness. Let's grab our roughness. Drop that in there. That's going to make it look like, uh, like it's not a clean waxed car. It's going to dirty it up a little bit more. It's going to break up those reflections. And same for the, the gloss. We can even, let's go high gloss. And gloss is the invert of specular. So you'll want to flip those around. But there we go. We got our gloss and our specular. And now finally we add the color. And you have your full texture. And it looks beautiful. Get up in there. It's insane. The amount of detail on this is crazy. RD textures, man. They're the best. And if for whatever reason, your, um, I know you guys can't really see it because my head is in the way here on the stream, but just below here, we have uh, our textures and my one texture is just white. Just double click this little preview window and it'll update it in the small view, if that makes any sense. If you're having the problem, you know what I mean. If you're not having the problem, then don't even worry about it. But let's keep going. Let's keep finding some cool textures. Um, destructive floor. Ooh, we got destructed walls now. This stuff is interesting. Kind of like a torn wall with some uh, insulation on the inside. That's yeah, that's interesting. But this, I don't know. I'm less concerned about the walls right now, and more so the the ground plane. But let's just see what they got. Like that's a pretty cool texture. Most of this stuff you can get from uh, from Mega Scans though. It's just like. The grounds here are really cool. Oh, that's a nice one though. We could probably use that. Yeah, that's definitely Mega Scans one. This one's cool because it has some pipes hanging out the wall. I really like that. This one too, yeah. Let's let's build these two really quick. I like those a lot. Oh man, I keep doing that. I keep closing it down. Um, textures, RD textures, destructed wall, six and seven textures. We want the four Ks. So 4K bump, we want 4K color, 4K depth, 4K gloss, 4K normal, and 4K roughness. Look at that, look how crazy that is. That displacement map is nuts, huh? That's what makes these RD textures so nice is their displacement maps, they're insane. And finally, um, we'll do one more, and we'll figure out where to go next here. Let's plug this in. 
destructive wall seven, go into textures and we want our 4K bump, the 4K color, 4K depth, 4K gloss, 4K normal, and 4K hit roughness. There we go, and we got a really nice destructed wall. Looking really good. I'm super happy with that. Let's add these. Actually, they're already added. Very nice, because we were just duplicating. Okay, cool. All right, so we have some fun ground uh, textures and stuff. Let's just duplicate this and show you guys what we're working with. And we can hide our character for a second too. So yeah, we got a couple walls and we got some, we got like ground texture here. We got this muddy ground, we got this muddy ground. I'm gonna bring in actually one of the, uh, one of these guys here that we were looking at, maybe two different ones. So based off of our reference, there's a lot of rubble in the ground, a lot of dirt and trash and stuff we can add to this. And this is all mega scans. We'll add all these like things here. This frame in the ground is really cool. I want to do some frames in the ground. It looks like a bed. It's totally a bed. That's amazing. Um, so let's see if we can't pull two of these that look like that. This one is good. This one is good. Like these, honestly, these are all really good. Um, let's go with one that's a bit more dirty. So maybe this one. Hmm. Yeah, this one here, number one, and and number five, number one and number five. Let's try those out. All right, um, let's go with the bump, 4K color. I'm skipping the uh, AO, ambient occlusion. I probably just don't need it. We can always come back to it, you know? Um, let's go with a high gloss on this one. Normal and roughness. And what I do, I'm doing the 4Ks again because I wanna save as much VRAM as possible. It's gonna get out of hand very quick. So, um, I can always switch them out for 8K textures when I need to, but look at that. Isn't that crazy? How good that looks. Absolutely insane. Um, and one more, one more. Let's do number five. I believe it was right. I keep, God, I keep closing this screen. That's what I need a third monitor for, you know? Mm, number five. Where are, you, where are you, sir? Was it six or five? That was five. Yeah, okay. All right, let's go with that bump. Color, depth, high gloss, normal, and roughness. By now, you guys should know these are the ones. That, these are the go-to's. These are the hits. Boom. Sick. All right, so we got some nice ground textures that we can work with here make things nice and muddy and gross. We can change the color of it. So if you guys want to change this color, we can hop into the node editor 
and we'll give this a color correction node and we can just you know maybe I don't know turn up the gamma 1.2 1.4 take the saturation down to 0 0.8 0 0.7 And now it's kind of looking very similar to this mud, you know? So you're going to have to color correct these together. Um, and we're going to mix them together too with octane mix nodes and stuff. Let's get our character back. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Lots of fun stuff to work with. Now it'd be cool to have, this would be a lot of sourcing of materials today. So let's, let's look at this here. We have a really nasty road, some concrete that's all busted up over here. There's like a little brick area with some stone steps and stuff that could be nice. I'm just looking at this to try and see how we can lay this out. So let's go ahead and organize our crap. We definitely need to organize all this. Because it's going to get out of hand. It's going to be a big scene. So let's right click, uh, control click all this lighting business. Control, oh no, Alt G group and I'm going to call this lights and then let's go ahead and group all of our uh, our buildings and stuff alt G I'm going to call this uh, I'll call this block out and then I'm going to put that into its own folder with the ground and all these planes and stuff and let's alt G and call this geo for geometry Character and camera, I'll leave outside of that. And then this random modifier, I'll throw that into geometry for our block out too. So how are you guys doing? You can take a little chill break here. Guys, give me some thumbs ups if you guys are doing okay. If you guys are learning stuff, um, smiley face, you know, throw me, throw me a little something. Are you guys doing all right? Are you guys working on your render? If you guys are working on your render, um, give me a little star emoji or something. Vonch, are we allowed to add more characters in our scene? Well, that is a question that's answered in the FAQs on the Discord. But. You can add whatever you want as long as the main character in that sphere uh, maintain the same visual weight um, and are kind of the, the uh, I don't know, the center point of your render. It's all good. Sweet, guys. We got some happy people. We got some stars, people working on the renders. Very cool. Again, we have until June 1st. Ooh, Sotomonte's working on his. Yeah, we got a lot of freaking stars up in here going to be some really awesome renders but like i was going to say guys we're we got till june 1st so take your time with it you can see i'm not rushing this process please take your time with it make it look as nice as possible because we want to make this render montage as epic as possible so keep it up keep up that good work um geez sodomonte says okay so talking about the discord we're almost at 20k oh my god that's insane, guys. 20K members on the Discord. It's incredible. My goodness. And you guys have kept it such a fun, creative place. Let's keep it up. Let's keep it that way. It's a very clean, creative, supportive environment. And that's exactly the way I want to keep it. So, friggin' good work, everybody. You guys are amazing. It's really rare to say that there's 20K people uh, in the Discord server. 
And it's not just a freaking crapshoot of like just random vulgar stuff. Um, so you guys, congratulations to y'all for keeping it such a clean and fun place to be. That's amazing. That's very amazing. And to the mods too, to all my mods, shout outs. Let's get them all. We got Soda Monte and Darren Winkle, the OGs, the original mods who helped me uh, early last year. And then just recently, maybe a month ago, we brought on some good people. We got Visual, we got MDK, we have Ronin, and we have Sipo. And I feel like I'm not missing someone, somebody. And if I am, I'm terribly sorry. There's a lot of there's a lot going through my brain on these streams, you know. But I think that's everybody. Sipo, MDK, Ronin, Visual, Sotomonte, and Deeran. Yeah. All right, y'all. Um, where are we at? How are we feeling? I'm excited that I've got this render started. We're two hours into the stream. Um, maybe we can go for another hour or something. I'm feeling it. Um, oh, here's another question that's in the FAQs, but an important one. I'm, it says, should I use the default character? Well, uh, again, it's in the FAQs. You can change the character out for whoever or whatever you want, as long as it's a character <laughs> uh, with two legs and two arms. And uh, heck, I don't know what if, if there's four arms, whatever. But like, it just needs to be a character walking like this character is walking. You need to slap it onto this animation. Um, so yes, you should change the character out. But the character here is there in case y'all are super lazy and you don't do that, or you feel that this is the exact character you want. It's there for you just in case, all right? But yes, switch it out. Have fun with it, yeah? How to submit. Great question. There is... isn't. Oh, yeah, Polygon. I did miss somebody. And Polygon. The last mod. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um. So, yeah, there's no submission link yet. There will be this week. But I specifically didn't want to add one because, guys, you shouldn't be submitting already. Take your time on your renders, please. Uh, you have the time, so take the time. Definitely take the time. I think we're going to be doing it through Google. Uh, we've got a little Google Sheet situation going where you can submit, and we have some very specific submission requirements that if you do not follow, let's just say you want to follow those submission requirements. That's all I'm going to say, all right? One dead duck. Thanks for the super chat. Team Apocalyptic, let's go. Absolutely. Um, I'm excited to see your render, dude. You always put out good stuff. Huh. What else, guys? What else? Yeah, what happens if there's a thousand renders in the compilation? What am I going to do? Let's do the math. 1,000 renders times 5, because it's 5 seconds, divided by 60 is... 83 minutes, yeah, <laughs> divided by 60 again, is an hour, uh, about an hour and 30 minutes, hour and 38 minutes, I guess, is that what that is? Um, It's going to be insane, let me just say, it's going to be insane, if there's 2,000 submissions, we're going to nearly be at three hours, and that'll officially be my first feature film, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see. If I get a bunch of freaking troll submissions, then those probably wouldn't make it in the stream or in the montage. But if you guys actually apply yourself and work hard, then it'll be in there. It'll be there for sure. We'll have to see. Um, I might do a top 100 montage and then I'll do like the full montage, which will be like three hours long. I'll just have to see. Really, we'll have to see. My intention is to include everybody. It just matters. Like, it just depends on how many submissions we get. Um, but even if we get a million submissions, I want to do, I want to figure out a way to show everyone's stuff in a montage. Yeah, we'll figure it out guys. Don't worry. We'll figure it out. Hmm. All right. Let's, uh, let's lay out some groundwork. I am a fan of the mud right here. I'm also a fan 
of this broken rubbly ground right here. I think this one's a solid one to include. This one, the broken tiles, I'm not sure where I'll put this yet. This is more of an indoor deal. I'm not, who knows? This one, we'll see. I'm not sure where to put that either. This one could be mixed with this one. And then that could be mixed with this one for some cool stuff. Superior Productions. What up? You say, do like multiple episodes with seasons. Oh, that's interesting. And release them, I don't know, one, release one a month. I don't know. That's, that's an interesting, interesting one. Oh, screen switch. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Hmm. I appreciate y'all. Y'all helping me out all the time. God, this is going to be so much work. <laughs> this is going to be so much work. But it's going to be worth it. It'll absolutely be worth it. All right. So let's lay out a single material. And then we'll go from there. We'll make it more advanced from there, okay? So, geometry. And these planes here. Um, we'll hop out of the camera. You know, here's what I'll do. We'll take the camera option. We'll uncheck the check camera option, which is confusing. I, still, I just need to update my octane. I know they, they switched it up a little bit more. And let's grab this muddy guy over here. And let's lay this out. So my camera is, let's see, let's, uh, let's take my ground plane, turn it off. And then we'll take this guy, we'll zero it out. And why is it, there we go, okay, okay, boom, there we go, that's what we need. Now it's on the ground. Let's scale it just to as far as we need. You see, I don't need to come any closer to camera. I want to save as much computer juice as possible, my goodness. And we can do this in, in little strips too. So this will just be like our initial foreground piece. And again, we'll change this to cubic. And you can see it's tiling pretty bad. Um, let's go into full view and see what it looks like. I don't want to scale this up too much because I want the detail to be maintained. We can rotate it to get a little bit less tiling going on there. You guys see how that worked? So the difference, you can see the tiles going into the uh, uh, the vanishing point. But if we rotate it just a bit, it throws off the vanishing point and kind of turns it out over this way. But let's go ahead and scale it up just a little bit. And this will be fixed definitely when we um, when we start blending these materials together with other materials, okay? So let's go into the displacement and let's set this to 20. Well, 15 is nice. Okay. Now we have this guy, this wet road as well. So we can make a mixed material. So I'll make a mixed material. We'll add this to the RD textures layer. We'll apply our mixed material and we'll hop 
in. No, how's this gonna work? Because displacement only works. Um, you can use one displacement on a mixed material. Hmm. I don't know if anyone knows a way around that. We got some super chats to address. I just realized. So Jordan, thank you for the super chat. Much appreciated. What was the inspiration behind uh, the walking animation you did for this challenge? I just wanted to do something a little different than just a simple walk. Um, I wanted it to be a bit more dynamic and I wanted people to envision a little bit more something than just walking. So is this character, what are they, holding a backpack? Are they pulling something? Like, what are they doing? So I wanted to make it a little bit more dynamic in that sense. And just 3D things, thank you for the super chat. Very generous of you. Um, that is amazing. You say, more work, more awesomeness. Love the stream so far. Thanks for doing it every week, Clint. Uh, yeah, dude, I got you, man. I got you. Um, it, it's nice though, it's, ni it's a nice balance because sometimes I'll release edited videos on the weekend which gives me a chance to relax and take a weekend to catch up and refresh. But I feel great today because I hadn't streamed in a minute so we're doing it together and it feels good. But we want a mixed material, like I said. We want a mixed material between this guy holding shift will move the entire uh, structure material one and material two drag this out and I'll mix them together with a, a noise node and let's just go ahead and set this to cubic as well And they're being mixed together right now with a float node uh, set to 0.5. So in one direction, it is one material set to one. It's another material. And notice there's no displacement map, so we need to fix that. But we'll go ahead and delete the float texture. And let's pipe in a noise node. Octane noise. We'll give it a projection and a transform. Let's set the contrast to a thousand. That way we can see what we're doing. We can right click and solo it just to get a better idea as well. And we can transform it up so it's a little bit larger like this. And then we take the contrast back down once we dial in the shape. A little bit something like that. Hop back into our camera. And we can maybe take the transform back down, like 15 or something, 10 perhaps. And let's adjust the octaves to like 8 and the omega to 0 0.8 so it gets a bit more detail, right? And maybe we take the transform, we keep taking the transform down. 1, 2, maybe, I don't know, maybe 5 or something. And it's the displacement is what we need. So let's pipe in this displacement here. And it's not looking the greatest because we're still getting like, whoa, the tiling. Hmm. So we have that displacement. We also have this displacement. And we wanna certainly combine these two together. So I think there's like a displacement mixer. Vertex displacement mixer. I've never used this though. So displacement one, displacement two, and then does that just combine them together? But it doesn't look like they're working. Blend weight. I, I don't know how this works. Does anyone know how the displacement mixer works in Octane? Matthew, why don't I add background ambient music to my streams? Well, one, I don't have a background ambient music that goes for that long. Two, um, I'd rather you guys just add your own music in the background 
That way it doesn't get ridiculous, you know what I mean? Uh, Adam, you said you just got into 3D recently, and you've been a huge inspiration. Thank you for all the amazing work. Thank you for the super chat. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for learning with me, man. Yeah, we're doing it together. Thank you, sir. Um, Steven Vazquez, I see you. Okay, thank you for the super chat. You say, uh, would this work with rotoscoping? I'm not very savvy with this type of content. Maybe I can make a cool animation. By the way, I'm new here, but loving the content. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, so I guess the contest is a 3D contest? I never really had someone ask, can you do it with footage? But, I mean, give it a shot, dude. That sounds really cool. Um, yeah, freaking rot rotoscope it. Um, give it a shot. Yeah, like I said, it sounds sounds pretty sweet. And Alan um, says, what do you think of making this challenge result in NFT? Um, I am 100% against selling everyone's work as an NFT and collecting money for that. That would be very not chill of me to do. I'll sell my own as an NFT. You guys can sell your individual ones as NFTs, but I, I'm not gonna take the montage and sell the montage. Maybe in the future, we can do a, a, uh, a charity one where everyone comes together and we try and make as much money for charity as possible. I would do that, but not this time around. It would have to be announced as a charity one um, from the beginning, but that's a good question, Alan. Thank you for asking. Um, so yeah, the octane mixer, you have to mix texture and not displacement or octane. Let's see, you have to mix texture and not displacement. I don't understand. Um, use chaos node to avoid tiling. Dude, I don't even know what chaos node is. Chaos node? Is that even in here? That's not even in here. Maybe it's a new version of, of, uh, of Octane or something. Let's see. Let's see. Anyone have any advice on this mixing situation? Um, let's see. You can mix RGB and use noise texture to blend them and use a displacement. Okay, wait, so you're saying use a mixed node and, and do it with a mixed node? So it'd be like texture one, texture two, the amount would be the same as this noise. And that would go into a, let's see, let's delete that. That would go into a displacement. Mm, 0.5, 4K. Re-render the scene, that's not really working. Huh, I mean, that's a good idea but I don't know why it's not working. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure on that one. Hmm. Well, here's the here's a different way to do it. Here's, here's a different way to go about it. Let's go back to our original setup. Let's pipe this stuff in to the displacement of the original nodes here. And instead of using the displacement or the mix material, we can actually have two ground planes. So one ground plane will be that. Let's duplicate this, control drag. Let's give this the other one. So we have two ground planes going, and you can see how we're kind of mixing between the two. Let's set this ground plane to cubic as well. And now you kind of have both chilling up in here. 
And let's go with a third, control drag. And let's give it this like rubble, this rubble texture. And we'll set that to cubic as well. And the displacement or the tiling on this one is insane. So we'll have to be very selective with it. I think what we can do is we'll scale this down. Let's hop out of here. And let's go ahead and, hmm, yeah, we'll scale it down, which is not going to help our tiling situation. But let's see if we can't adjust the displacement a little bit more. Instead of 30, let's go to 15. And we'll rotate it. something like that and then let's go ahead and actually give it some extra displacement i'm gonna hold shift and let's throw a displacer node on it and we'll set the shading to a noise map we'll go up into the noise map and let's simply just crank the height uh but let's see this is going off of uh of actual geometry so let's just set this to 10 by 10 and you can see how we get some like rocky little lumps out of this thing. Um, maybe we can adjust a little bit more so it's kind of square, 10 by 20. But obviously these dirt piles are too large for us and they are a little bit, uh, a little chunky. So maybe we just take this to like 30 by 60. Now it's really intense. So we're gonna have to bring down the noise intensity. So let's just do our global scale. We'll crank our global scale. There we go. So it's a little bit more of, um, we got some hills going on, you know? Let's go to the object. We'll bring the height back down. So it's very subtle. Very, very subtle like that which is pretty cool. And let's take our muddy texture, our original muddy texture. Let's bring it up by a centimeter or 10. Oh, that's not working. I gotta go to object mode. Let's try it again. So this is a very, like you just gotta play with it, you know? And this is a way for us to mix these together. I actually learned this from David Aryev, um, and that was his way of dealing with tiling, is to have multiple versions of your foreground or background with different displacement levels that kind of pop in and out of each other like that. And if your textures are close enough to each other, you'll actually be able to get away with, uh, you know, what, what am I trying to say? If your textures are color corrected in a similar fashion, in this case, dark, glossy, um, kind of desaturated, then you can kind of get away with it and how it blends into each other. So yeah, that's a nice, fun little, little trick. And if we hit play, we go back into our camera, we can see that we're, you know, we're getting a lot of fun foreground variation as we, kind of scan and pan across our foreground. So I'm very, very excited for that. That's gonna be sweet. And we just build it out, you know? We just gotta build this thing out. So I'm gonna move our geometry, let's just move it a little closer to camera. And I'm gonna give it a touch of uh, depth of field. So you gotta go easy on this. I'll show you guys about as far as you can go. So let's go to thin lens. Let's change it to one. And we'll set our focal point on our character. And this is gonna be too much. That's gonna be too much. You can see our background is kinda out of focus. Foreground is kinda out of focus. So I'm probably gonna take this to 2.8, maybe 3.5, 3, just, just like a little subtle something. And then I'm also going to change the depth of field 
aperture to two, aperture edge to three, and that gives it an anamorphic feel. It's gonna kinda stretch out our bokeh highlights into ovals, and that's what you get when you see an anamorphic lens, say on Star Wars or Star Trek or something, any feature film really, any, any solid feature film from the 90s, uh, shot on film, like they're going to have these oval bokeh patterns in the lights when they're in the foreground and the background. And that's because basically what the light is looking through is a, well, technically, yeah, it kind of gets deep with it, but yeah, it's camera stuff, it works. <laughs> Welcome back, Crow. You've been gone for a while, but you have returned. Light Air and D, hey, welcome. First time streaming for you, dude. Thanks for catching it. I hope it's a good time. Let's hope it's a chill time for you. And we've done a good job. We've kept a thousand plus viewers for the majority of the stream here. We're just hitting 950 right now. People are getting tired, I understand. I'm getting a little tired myself. That's how it is. But man, I can't wait to start adding stuff to this. Adding some burning barrels and, you know, some pipes and wires and broken crap and glass and bottles and all that stuff. That's when you have fun. But right now, I'm still blocking it out. We could do something cool back here too. We could even have this be a pit in the ground, a giant massive hole in the ground or something. Could be pretty sweet. Let's set up a, a Z depth pass. I'm probably gonna need this later. We'll switch our renderer to octane and we'll go to render, render pass, check that, info passes and Z depth pass. Click that and we'll just adjust our depth here. And we'll probably have to render, I don't know, probably just the one. And we'll, I'm gonna see if I can do fog in After Effects like we did last time. Cause that's really gonna help on render time, like a lot. I think you can shift all this stuff in After Effects. Sai Sharon, yo, thank you again for the generous super chat. Appreciate you, brother. Say so recently I started working on my lighting skills. How to improve this area of CG pipeline because it's very challenging sometimes. Yeah, man, that's that's really the one is lighting. It all comes down to lighting. You can have a really good render, really good environment, but if it's not lit well, then man, that's that's a shame. So let's yeah, definitely want to make sure your stuff is lit as well as possible. For me, what I do is I actually have a list of feature films, at least uh, a list of images. Let's go to VFX materials. No, this would be pictures, cinematography. Here we go. I have all of these movies. I hadn't updated this in a long time, but take The Last Samurai, for example. I'm going through and I'm just, Finding frames that I really enjoy, and I'm, you know, the frames that look nice, that make me go, ooh, that's a good one. You know, and I'll ask myself, well, how is it lit if I'm trying to apply it? Because this is what this is what I would go back to when I was working at Rocket Jump. I'd pull up these images and I'd say, how is this lit? How am I going to make, you know, um, our scene look like this? And at the time, I was doing live action shots. You know, I was actually had a camera, had my lights. And I have to set them up to make them look like this. And you just break it down. You see, well, there's definitely a light coming back here from the window. So this is a nice little area. And it's hitting the edge here. It's getting Tom Cruise on the back here. A nice little edge light. Um, and it looks like that's kind of the main light source. You probably have a fill light coming from over here to hit him, hit his face right here. Um, but the majority of this is from this light back here. And it's causing a nice little silhouette. And the, and the way you get this, uh, these light streaks is with a little bit of atmosphere or some fog on set. You fog up your room a little bit and it'll get you these light shafts. 
So I'll find frames that I really enjoy or I want to ask myself, how is this lit? Like, how would you light a giant scene like this? Well, they got these giant windows over here, which is getting hitting everyone from the side here. Um, you also have some lights hitting the side of this train, so you probably have some lights coming from this side too, filling in all the, you know, the dark side of people's faces. You can see a little edge there on that guy's neck, but it's mostly coming from these giant windows. Here's another good one of Tom Cruise from the window, giant edge light, and you probably have some sort of soft box in the foreground. You can look at his eye light, and you can see where the lights are. And you can probably tell that there's a camera right behind, or there's a light right behind camera lighting up his sweat. This is doing a big one here, and it's getting his edge light there. So it's just an example of like how you guys can find images that you think look nice and just think critically about them and break them down. This is just lit from the sky. You know, so this would just be an HDRI environment to get you this look. And obviously the windows and the firelight inside of all these little huts. Same deal here. They're probably spicing it up with a bigger light. Back here, it's a giant movie set. And this is fake rain, you know, so they have a big, probably soft box. It's blasting here and getting you a little bit of that. Um, one thing is look where your shadows are pointing. Which direction are your shadows pointing? You know, that's a good way to determine... Um, you know, how your lights should be set up. So yeah, that's just a little trick for you guys. I think there's websites for this now. I think there's like, a, I, I don't know the name of it. Maybe you guys have already typed it into the comments, but there's a website, I forget the name of it, but it basically is this. I just did it the manual way because that website wasn't really a thing when I started doing it. Yo, this is one of my favorite ones though. This one's so good, I love that render. See, it's that ground with the light back here, hitting the highlights on the wood. Yeah, that's, that's when you know what's up. See the shadows, direction of the shadows coming towards camera. That means we have a light up here somewhere, just out of frame, lighting up this here and probably these steps and maybe even this roof. It's a big old light back there. It's a movie set. They, they can do it with the big budgets, but we're in CG and we get to do it for free, especially if you're using Blender. <laughs> Ah, oh, all right. All right. But another note on lighting, y'all. Another note on lighting is my plan is to build out my scene with this temp lighting that I have right now. And when I get to a point where I have like most of my stuff kind of in the frame, then I'll start changing the light and getting different looks to think outside the box. I don't want to get pigeonholed into one look. Um, so I'll switch up the lighting. I'll do things that I normally wouldn't do. You know, I'll position the sun in a way. I'll do a sunny version of the scene. I'll do a different, I'll do a nighttime version. I'll do an overcast version. I'll do a um, golden hour version. I'll do a backlit version. I'll do a frontlit version. I'll do like a version with a red sky. I'll just do a bunch of different versions and save those small little render thumbnails and look at them and be like, what do I like about all these? Maybe I can, it'll give you ideas. Start playing with different colors, blue and yellow, um, you know, cyan and, uh, and what is it? Cyan and teal, that kind of movie film look. And the only way to come up with different lighting solutions is to experiment. So since we're in CG, we can do it for free. Experiment like, to your heart's content. Go crazy with it, you know? So that's definitely a good, a good thing to do is switch up your lighting setup once you got everything together. It really helps you guys get out of your head, outside the box, and will spark some really interesting results. I, I bet you. I bet you all. Cole, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, thanks for working hard on all your guys' stuff. Uh, it's been freaking awesome. Yeah, I, I, I don't really know where else to go from here. Uh, I mean, I could start getting into it, but I really need to start thinking critically about how I'm placing all my stuff. Um, you know, I'd probably work a little bit more on the foreground 
and get a little bit of variation in the foreground. Maybe there's a part of the foreground that has like broken concrete tiles and stuff. Like maybe let's bring in some of those bridge assets that we favorited. So let's go let's go to our favorites and see what we can see here. Oh, the barrels, man, the barrels. Definitely get some barrels up in here. That'll be fun. Screw it. Yeah, let's get a barrel in here. Um, What do you guys think? Th these rusted ones? Blue, green, or red? We got rusted barrels. We got blue, green, or red. I'm going to leave it to y'all. What do you think I should throw in here? You guys want to do a little color contrast with some blue? You want to keep everything uniform with the rusted? You want to go green with it? You want to go red with it? What do you guys think? Green, red, red barrels like Half-Life. Red barrels, red, rusted, red barrels, all rusted, red, red, rusted, green, red. All right, let's go with the red. Let's go with the red. You guys are right. Rusted. The, I mean, the, the red barrel, that's the explosive ones. You got to watch out for those ones, you know. Um, so let's download it. Let's make sure we have this set to export settings. We want not Unreal Engine. We want C4D. I was going to do this in Unreal. But y'all, I'd be out of my element a little bit. Just a little bit too much out of my element. All right, well, let's export the 4K version. Because we want to save as much computer juice as possible. And y'all, this is just the beginning. I'm probably going to throw in some rusted barrels too. I'm going to throw them all in. It's going to be a good time. But for now, we have a red, a red barrel in our scene. I'm going to rotate it so you can tell that it's like bent up a little bit. And let's adjust the, let's see. Let's, let's right click it first. We'll add it to a new layer. And that new layer is called Mega Scans. And I want to change the material type to glossy and octane. And for whatever reason, that makes it look like a mirror. Glossy and Beckman? Diffuse? No, universe. let's try universal again. And I'll try changing these like see how it's just like not really catching there we go so when I change it to octane the BRDF model it really shines which is what you want um, glossy for some reason takes it to a I think that's because the metallic is turned on um, so if we take this Metallic, well, maybe it's universal and metallic goes down to zero. Ah, oh, it's because the albedo is plugged into the metallic. That would make sense. Um, let's try glossy again, octane glossy, and try piping it in again. No, that's not really working. Is it because our index is set to eight? That's why, 1.3. Yeah, so now we, we, have, we have control over this barrel. You know, we can change this barrel out however we want. We can control drag it and move it over. Maybe have one like in the foreground or something. This definitely isn't final. It's just here as an asset. And it's not dirty enough. Well, let's go with the rusted. Let's let's bring a rusted one in. Let's see what that looks like. Rusted barrel. We'll download the 8K, but we'll transfer over the 4K. Again, we're trying to save as much computer juice as possible. The scene's going to get crazy. 
4K. Let's get our 4K going. Export that 4K. And you got to be very particular about the way you place all of these objects. Because the way your objects are placed, it shapes your scene. So let's add this to our Megascans layer. And let's hop out of camera view and try and get like the best look out of this as possible. I want to make sure, set this to octane, glossy, no, that's not, I guess glossy 1.3. Yeah, you see off the top, it's all nice and shiny. That's exactly what we want. But we're not really seeing the tops of these things unless, of course, you know, we angle it a little bit or something. Then you see the top of it just a bit sticking out the ground. So we missed the super chat, didn't we? NAQ montages. What up? Thank you for the super chat. Says, how much blood and gore can um, the submissions have? Are there any restrictions on that? Yeah, so that is also in the FAQs on the Discord, so make sure you guys are reading those. Um, blood and gore is okay. I'm, I'm cool with that. Just no nudity. No nudity in these things. Um, yeah. Simple answer. Simple question. Good question. But no, it's in the FAQs. Check those FAQs. Hmm. <laughs> motion blur. Yes, we want a little bit of motion blur too. How are we going to do motion blur? That's a great question, isn't it? Okay, so you can go to the motion blur little tab here on your camera imager. I'll set this to 1 over 60 because you, the default baseline for motion blur on film cameras, any camera you're shooting with, is always it's always double your shutter speed so in this case our shutter speed or sorry it's always double your frame rate since our project frame rate is set to 30 frames per second you want to um you want to set your motion blur to 1 over 60 so it's double right um and then you would check that on make sure this is centered save your scene turn it on and then you'll have a little bit of motion blur going in your scene it's very subtle, but it adds. It definitely adds. It's all about that realism. You want it to look as real as possible. Take away maybe the uh, the thin lens. So you just get the motion blur. You see the motion blur there? And it's happening more so in the foreground because the things in the foreground are moving faster versus the background. Now, if you want to get that Saving Private Ryan look, you can set it to like one over 120. So it's a bit more of a, uh, you have less motion blur in your scene. 3.5, the high shutter speed look, the Saving Private Ryan motion blur look is a higher shutter speed. So one over 120. And since I kind of have a war scene, you know, maybe that's the look I'm gonna go for. It probably is. Very cool, very cool. So in my reference, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the ground. We have this bed frame, we have the barrels, um, you know, we have like a bunch of rusted crap that's all over the ground. There's a street here, there's cobblestone brick, there's like stairs that go up here. So I wanna add all this stuff to the scene. Um, burning barrels for sure, yeah, exactly. So I'll kind of be strategically placing those throughout the week, and when I come back next week for the stream, hopefully my foreground is a little bit more involved and it has a lot more stuff going on that I can break down for you guys and show you how I've set that up. 
Um, I'd love to wrap out the foreground by next week. That way I can get going on the background and then spend a week on the background and then I'll spend a week probably spicing it up with like characters and robots and plants and stuff. And then my last week will be in After Effects compositing the thing because, you know, there's going to be a lot of compositing going on for this. I want to try and do the fog um, in After Effects like I did last time. Maybe I'll do some rain, too. That could be cool. Some wind. I, I love my, my atmosphere. If you guys don't know that by now. I'm a big fan of atmosphere. I think it really adds to a render. It's stuff that is rare in real life. When have you seen a windy, foggy, rainy scene that looks like this? Never. When have you seen a scene that looks like this? Not, huh? I don't know, maybe once or twice in your life. I know when we filmed the Kill Zone live action short on my, uh, my YouTube channel, you guys can watch it on my YouTube channel here. It's called a live action Kill Zone, Kill Zone Extraction. We filmed in a place like this, and it was incredible. So incredible. It was rainy and muddy and. My socks were coming off in my boots. I had so much mud stuck to my shoes. Oh, my God. We filmed for two days straight, and we uh, had a pyrotechnician come out and blow stuff up. So I'm a fan of that stuff, man. I'm a fan of that weather a lot. All right. So I think, I don't know. I'm at a point where I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I just need to crank on it, you know? So I'll probably take this time here to answer any questions you guys have. What's going on on with y'all? You guys having a good day? You guys having a good uh, good stream session? You guys having fun with your renders? I hope you are. I know I'm excited. I'm getting excited. It's coming to, it's coming to life. It is coming together. So I'm very excited about that. All right, Tall Goose Jerry, what app am I using for my reference images? I'm using Pure Ref. Pure Ref. It is a really nice one. Um, you can see it. Well, it's my whole head talking at this point, but it's Pure Ref. P U R E R E F. Pure Ref. It's free and it's incredible. Um, great for organizing your references and all that good stuff. Where did I get the reference? I made the reference, I made it in Photoshop. Um, once this stream is over, you guys can take a look at the beginning of it where I go over um, my concept art and how I made it. I made it in Photoshop. Yeah, pieced it together from just a bunch of reference images, basically. Um, what else? Or how long have you been doing DC? DC? Cinema 4D? Um... I've been in C4D for a while, man. Like, I started in release 10, so that was... 12, 11 years ago? I don't know. But I used 3DS Max for six of those years. I switched back. Yeah. So if you guys hit me with the at Punisher on the chat, it'll be a lot easier to kind of focus on, on these questions. Um, can you show the render so far in full screen? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Let's do that. Um, let us full screen mode and we'll let this do its thing here. We'll let that render a little bit. Um, Mr. Linva IT asks, do hey, whoa, hold on now. It's Don Allen. Yo, Don Allen in the house. What's going on, dude? You are freaking the best man ever. You guys talk about my positive vibes. Y'all haven't hung out with Don Allen yet, have you? Because this guy is the most positive dude I know. Um, we spent like an hour just talking about C4D plugins the other day. It was hilarious. Um, yeah, Don is great, man. If you guys are into like the whole um, VR or AR stuff, uh, Don Allen is your guy. So check out his channel. Um, I'll pin his comment here so you guys can see. Let's see. Uh, um, replace pinned message yes yeah check out don allen stuff he's a good super good dude he worked at uh, dreamworks for a while but recently left to do his own thing Does that sound familiar um all right mr linva do we have to make the render loopable for extra points no you do not have to make the render loopable because it all that's looping is the character between all of these renders that's what's looping you know um your render doesn't have to loop 
you can if you want it to, but it, it will not get you extra points. Um, <laughs> can you crack open the Unreal sequence scene and show us the sequencer quick? I uh, maybe not. <laughs> um, that was gonna take some time to load up. But Josh, hit me up on Discord if you have any questions about that, man. If you if you need a if you have any dire questions about the Unreal sequencer, hit me up on Discord. Going down the list, Tall Goose Jerry, can you look at your Discord? I sent you a cool render I did. I will check it out after the stream. Um, I, yeah, tend not to want to have my Discord open while I live stream for reasons. Yeah, I just want to, I'd rather keep people's privacy safe. I don't know what's on my Discord too. I don't want you guys like getting Sam and Nico's direct contact if it's on there or something. So I'm, I'm a little, just a little wary of opening Discord on the stream. I hope you guys uh, understand. But I will check it out as soon as I, as soon as we're done here. Um, do my do I make my own materials? I I have in the past. I don't really right now. I make my own surface imperfections. Uh, if you guys have been hanging out with me for a while, you probably know I have a surface imperfection pack and a video that breaks down how I made that pack. But no, I hadn't made my renders in a while. My own renders because they're on Mega Scans and. I don't know. They're on RD textures. Maybe, maybe I'll make a texture pack. There's just so many out there, you know. Hmm. What else? Have I tried Redshift? Yes, I have. Uh, a little bit. I'm more of an Octane boy, though. What should I practice to get better at 3D environment design and rendering? Marwan, good question. Um, follow environment artists on Instagram, on ArtStation, on Pinterest, whatever. Um, who make art that inspire you? There's no way, to, to me, the only way to get good is to have good taste. You have to have good taste um, in, uh, in music if you want to be a musician. You have to have good taste in art if you want to be an artist. You have to good, have good taste in environment art if you want to be a good environment artist. Like Find those artists and those images and those environments that just blow your mind and use that as reference. Look at that. Ask yourself, how do they make this? How do they do this? And start to craft your own ideas. Go outside. Start to take pictures of areas that you think are cool. Um, like, I love traveling. I, I love going to abandoned places. So that's kind of my inspiration, too. I love art books. You know, all these art books and stuff. This is how I get inspired. Um, I put on music, you know, that fits the vibe of, uh, you know, that fits the vibe of the art that I'm trying to make. So I'm just trying to surround myself in the coolest vibes possible. And then from there, I can start watching tutorials and building up the, the skill set that will eventually get me to create the art that I love making, right? Hopefully that makes sense to y'all. Um, moving down the line here. We got questions. We got questions. Hmm. Do I take peeks in the whip channel on Discord? Absolutely. I definitely do. I'm excited for what you guys are doing. Um, Joel, the walk sequence... And character object is broke in C4DR21. Any suggestions? Uh, yes, two suggestions. One, if you're paying for C4D's um, monthly thing, just upgrade your C4D. If you don't want to do that, then use the FBX. The FBX should not be broken. And you'll just have to apply the character to the FBX. I'm going to actually be releasing a tutorial on how to do that next week. So next week before I stream, I'm putting out a tutorial on how to change out the character um, and how to adjust the arms and stuff. So look look out for that Saturday, 9 a.m. I'll put it out, um, and then I'll be streaming right after that. So I got you on that for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, weird. So it looks like any other version of C4D, it's kind of broken. Well, yeah, use the FBX. Test out that FBX, guys. Hopefully that works for you. We've got a lot of questions. What are my PC specs? They're on the Discord in the info um, info channel, but I have an RTX NVIDIA uh, Quadro 6000. I don't know. I got some old CPU. Um, I, I got two monitors, Asus monitors. Um, I got like, what, 64 gigs of RAM. The specifics are in the Discord on the info, but that's a good question. And yo, you know what? No, they're in the description of this video. Just realized. 
I added that recently. Yeah. Um, how many products do you think I'll be able to fit into the final video? How many final renders do you think I'll be able to fit in the final video? There was 125 last time. We'll see, man. We'll see. We'll see how much music we can get written for it. Um, and we'll see how long it really is going to be. And then we'll go from there. All right. We'll make the best choice. Can I use real image projection like Ian Hubert in my render? Um, yeah, sure. Go for it. Absolutely. Is it okay to do the challenge even if we don't have that much skill? Absolutely. You want to learn and you want to grow through this. This is, this is a, a challenge for you guys. Challenge yourself. Get better with this. All right. You should definitely be doing this if, if you feel like you're not good enough. That's a bunch of crap, all right? We had people who just started Blender on the last challenge, and they submitted stuff, and it was in the, it was in the montage. It was freaking awesome. How long did it take me to settle on a concept? Um, I didn't know what I was going to do until Friday. I basically used... Um, I sat down... And for a couple hours, I went through all my art books and I listened to some ambient music and I just started getting ideas. And um, Wacom actually sent me this freaking awesome mobile workstation. This thing's crazy. So it's basically a computer as a tablet that you can draw on. So I used this um, and I booted up Photoshop and I started putting together some like rough reference scenes. Um, and just, yeah, just started building it out, you know? It took me a couple hours to figure out what I wanted to do, but it was dedicated time that I spent, you know, trying to, trying to get that going. What else here? Will my render make it to the final montage? It's pretty bad, but I'm doing my best. Um, my goal is to include all of the renders in the final montage. Um, off topic, but do you ever consider making a full course on Gumroad or something like a 10, 12 hours of stuff in one course? Yes, I have. That is my goal for the end of this year or the beginning of next year is to make a full on course for you guys. It'd be like a paid course or something. Um, that's just like click by click everything you guys need to know on how to do all the stuff. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that. How many products do you think would be able to fit? We answered that one. Let's see. Where do we post works in progress for this? On the Discord. Larry, it's on the Discord. Um, let's see. What else? We got a lot of questions still coming in. How are my planning to make destructions on buildings? Assets, y'all. Assets. I'm going to go and just buy some assets on CG Trader. It would take me 20 years and a day to be able to build all these buildings manually. <laughs> So I'm going to use the assets that I have um, and make that happen. Absolutely. Um, what else? Do I have any advice on how to keep that visual weight and not bog the whole thing down slash ruin it by adding all those cool details from your ideas? We're not sure how to fill empty space. Hey, that's a good question. Yeah, how do I... How much is too much? That's a good question. How much is too much? Well, that kind of comes down to personal opinion. You know, we are talking about art here. Um, if you look, again, going back to reference, if you look at renders that blow your mind from other artists, ask yourself how they composed the image to get the effect that, that you're looking at. Um... For instance, let's take a look at some of these movie frames. Ah, uh, Children of Men. So this frame here is framed very nicely, actually. There's a lot going on, but it's framed very nicely. What I'm seeing is two little blocks of space that are being taken up here and here. The fog adds depth to your image. And then you also have a little bit of sky coming in. So it's brighter up top. It's getting darker down towards the bottom. You have this little swoop right here that kind of draws the eye. My eye starts kind of here because the characters are actually moving through the scene, coming towards the camera. And then you have this giant swoop here, which guides the eye right around in this little area. Um, and then you have these little details off to the left, off to the right, that frame the image. They frame the center point of what's going on. So you have... All these little things like this little rusted pipe thing here. Um, 
that really help bring out the environment. Now the 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 color of these buildings are bluish, kind of cyan green, compared to the ground, which is a little bit more brown. It's a bit warmer. So you have these nice color, nice subtle color contrast going on between the buildings and the ground. So it helps these pop out a little bit more. Um, this also is kind of like in a bluish hue compared to the buildings. So that pops out a little bit too. Um, let's take another look here. Actually, this one is a great example. It's a center silhouette image here. And the, the reason this works so well is because two things. One, it's center framed. It's symmetrical. And also you have a really bright um, focus. This is your highlight. This is your focus of the scene. And then everything else kind of falls off onto the side. If you were to add a bunch of crap in this hallway, it would distract the eye from the center point of the frame here. They did just enough. They added just enough crap on the corners of this thing. And keep in mind, guys, these are movies. They don't just find these locations. They build these locations from scratch. So they added all this stuff by hand. They artistically placed all this stuff specifically to guide the eye to the center point of the screen. And yeah, it'd be too much if you had a bunch of crap in here, like bicycles and cupboards and you know um, pipes and everything. Like, no, it's focus is here. It makes it easy on the viewer. Um, this one here is not that great of an example because it's a moving shot. It's a big old moving shot that I just cut a little piece from. But this is a good, this is a great frame. This is a really nice one. Um, you have Clive Owen as the main character, and he's looking through this window, this busted out window of a bus that he's on. And you're seeing, what's the brightest point? It's the sky, obviously. And the reflection off the side of this building. So you're looking to the brightest point of the image, which is where our main character is looking. And... You know, you have a lot of movement back here in the movie. You know, you have your your smoke that's moving. You have your people that are moving around and stuff. And this image eventually turns into this image here. The camera pans with these characters that start running, and they get shot down as they run past. Um, so what would make this too much? If there was a bunch of crap here in the way, you have these guiding lines that are focusing the eye to the center point, the focus of your, of your shot here. You know what I mean? And if this was full of a bunch of stuff, you wouldn't really be sure what to look at. So they're guiding the eye with value, these, these um, bright tones and the dark tones, You're naturally looking at the brighter stuff and at the movement, all right? So if we were to take that and apply that to our render here, then we're gonna be looking naturally at the brightest point of the image. Um, based off of my, my concept art here, the brightest point of the image is definitely the sky. And to be honest with you, I feel like it's imbalanced. We're looking up here, and this is too dark. So what I'm going to need to do is balance out the focal point of my image a little bit more. It's too bright on one side and too dark on one on the other side. It almost looks like two images cut right down the middle. And I want to blend the foreground, the background, the left side, the right side, all together to make it feel like it's part of one world. And I also need to be very specific about my values here the sphere i need to maintain the spherical shape but i also don't want to forget about all the dark side over here i need to bring like some i'll probably bring in some uh orange light some firelight here i might actually cut out a little alleyway from here to have another like focal point maybe chop off a little bit of this um and maybe the character will be a little bit brighter or maybe it'll be darker against silhouette and I'll have the background back here have a lot of fog kind of in this area and it will actually help bring the character out from the environment. So you, you, you know, kind of focus on the character by framing them with stuff. So you see how this little bed frame is, is like, it's kind of in a weird place to be honest. Honestly, I would flip this around and have it loop back this way. This way it kind of like cradles and frames our main character. So the the way I'm placing all my little objects and stuff, all the little detail, it's going to be to frame my main character. So I'll have stuff on the edges of the frame, on the like right in the foreground, and kind of off to the side too. Now our camera's moving, so that frame is going to adjust. So I'm going to have to be very specific about how I do that. And it's going to be a lot of a lot of trial and error that I'll be able to show you guys next week. Hopefully I'll have a lot more done on the foreground to be in a near near final on the foreground 
next week and break that down for you guys. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. That was a long, long-winded answer, wasn't it? All right. You guys doing all right? I think I think I'm gonna call it. You know, we're at three hours now. I'm feeling good about my foreground, my template foreground. I'm gonna start going in here and just placing a bunch of objects and feeling it out. So, um, I appreciate y'all for hanging out with me. Uh, I guess I answer a couple more questions before I leave. Oh, Don Allen's getting some love. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Broken, is it within the rules to use After Effects and Element 3D to create the shot for this challenge? Of course it's within the rules. Yeah, man, the FAQs. If you read the FAQs, it says that you can use any program. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I just want you guys to create, learn, and grow. That's it. Have I been to film school? No, I have not been to film school. I went to a tech school for a year and a half. I dropped out after a year and a half. I was taking After Effects classes and Cinema 4D classes. But to be honest with you guys, some of you already know this. I knew all that stuff already because I was watching um, CGTuts.com and I was especially watching VideoCopilot.net and I learned all that stuff in my free time. And I was you know, bummed out that I wasn't learning a lot. And my teacher, my After Effects teacher, Mr. Mason, let me work on my stuff, my YouTube stuff as a grade in my After Effects class. Cause he knew he, I, I knew everything already, not everything, but I knew, you know, the basics. It was a, it was a beginner class. And he was actually the teacher who convinced my dad to let me drop out of college and move out to California to work with Freddie. So shout out to Mr. Mason. I'll never forget you. Any other questions, y'all? Hmm. What will my character be dragging? Um, I don't know. Maybe a giant pack of Capri Sun. Yeah, I don't know. A box of plants. It's planting plants as it moves throughout... This robot, I think it'll be like some sort of cyborg robot thing. Um, so I don't know yet. We'll see. Yeah, we'll have to see. Do you take music submissions? You mean in your render or just... I don't know. I'll be cutting out all the audio from your render. Even the sound design if you do it. Because I'm going to be adding my own music over top. <laughs> GG's Mr. Mason, absolutely. How's my movie coming along? Tinum, you're working on your next one already. That's awesome, dude. I didn't know you did a movie. Um, maybe I knew that. But you're doing your next one. That's great. Yeah, my movie's coming along good. Um, the writer I'm working with, Nate Davis. He, uh, the dude's friggin' incredible, very talented writer. We figured out our characters, we figured out our story, and he's doing an outline right now. So I'm excited to read the outline, and we'll go over it, and we'll do notes, and we'll figure it out. But yeah, it's turning out to be really cool. It's going to be an adventurous, um, action, mysterious drama, comedy. It's going to be everything. It's going to have all the good stuff. It's going to be adventurous. It's going to be fun. It's going to be scary. It's going to be full of a lot of good stuff. So I hope you guys enjoy this movie in a couple of years when it comes out. That's that's the long run right there, man. That's the long game for sure. But it's going to be sweet. Can the character not be dragging something? Sure, the character cannot be dragging something. But let me ask you this. Why is the character leaning forward? Why is the character leaning forward? Is it carrying a really heavy backpack? Is it dragging something? Maybe you move the arms. Is it pushing something? Who knows? Is it really windy? Is it leaning into the wind? Who knows? That's up to you to decide. Why is the character leaning forward? Um, and if you guys don't know, this is kind of confusing, but the, the overall note is no, you cannot change the character's body 
animation. You cannot touch it, except the shoulders down to the fingers. You can move the arms, but don't touch the head, don't touch the torso, don't touch the legs, don't touch the freaking hips, don't touch the shoulders. I'm sorry, I said you can do the shoulders. Basically, the arms. You can adjust the arms. So if you want your character pushing something, they can be pushing something. If you want your character shielding something, shielding your face from something, that's cool too. So you can adjust the arms, but that's it. Don't touch anything else. But y'all, I think that's about it. I think I'm going to call it. I'm going to get some lunch. I'm going to hang out with Cliff. Or maybe get some drumming in. Get some one wheeling in. But y'all, thank you guys. For hanging out with me. Anything that you guys need to know. Let's see. Um, make sure you read the FAQs. Please read the FAQs. Don't make it more complicated on yourself. Um, some pretty simple answers in there for y'all. Trying to keep it as simple as possible. Follow me on Instagram. I mean, all, all the stuff's in the description. You know, the Twitter, the Instagram, all that stuff. It's in the description. Um, What else? What else? Yeah, next week I got a standalone video for you and a live stream. So I'm going to show you guys how to replace the character in C4D and how to move the arms and stuff. And then hopefully we'll be finishing up the foreground. What else? What else? Um, I will have a submission link for you this week. But don't get eager to submit, all right? Make sure you guys spend the time you need to take. Take till June 1st. Make it good. Add the details, all right? Because those details are really going to come a long way and make your render better. Simply, it's just gonna make your render better. Keep filling it out, keep making it nice, keep iterating on it, change the lighting. Find the best version of what you're working on, okay, and submit that, don't submit anything else. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Don Allen, thanks for stopping by, man. Um, I'm wondering, are you gonna do something for the, for the challenge? It'd be sweet. It'd be really cool if you did, man. Um, but I understand if you're busy, then you got your thing to do too. You know, we're all running these YouTube channels, and it's tough being our own boss. It's a, it's very busy, a lot of work, a lot of work. But uh, y'all, thank you so much. Thanks for hanging out with me. No art review today. No art review next week. But you know, maybe what I will do is review some works in progress next week. So keep posting to the works in progress. Um, channel on the discord i'll pull some of them and i'll tell you guys what i like about them what i think hey keep going in this direction maybe i'll give you some examples of uh, some works in progress that are blocking the, the sphere element too much i'm not gonna rag on you i'm just gonna let you know hey maybe work the sphere in a little bit more you know what i mean maybe maybe uh work the character in a little bit more so hopefully that'll help you guys kind of guide your renders to a more unified place um Sweet. Don Allen's working on one. He's going to have raptors in it. Heck yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm so excited. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Sweet. Um, ah, so many questions, guys. I'll have to get them next time. Do I have any tips on starting a YouTube channel revolving around 3D? Yeah. Consistently post. Consistently post every week. It's a lot of work, but consistency is the only way. And make sure your thumbnail is good. Because your thumbnail is the only thing that is keeping the viewer from clicking on your video. All right? So remember that. I learned that from, from Nico, the corridor. All right. Y'all, have fun. Have a good one. I'll see you on the Discord this week. I'm going to hop into that voice channel. I know you guys are working. You're working in the voice chat. That's awesome. It's really cool to see. Um... All the, myself and the mods are talking about it in our mod chat. We're like, yo, look at the freaking voice channels are popping off. So I'll pop in from time to time this week, guys. But y'all have a good one. Thank you for everything. Um, hit that Skillshare link down below, please. It helps me out. It really does. Um, it helps me do more of these streams and stay alive. <laughs> so sign up and learn something. It's a win-win for both of us, all right? Y'all are amazing. Thank you so much for your time. I'm excited to see your stuff. And I'll be seeing y'all soon, all right? So I'm going to hit you with this end screen. Nice little track for y'all. I'll see you soon. Peace out, guys. Later. Uh, 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 uh,